So, Mike, how are you, my friend? Mm. Mike, you are muted. Pretty, pretty muted right now. <laughs> well, that just goes to show my day. I'm <laughs> sick as a dog, so I'm not great. But oh. I'm hoping to get better here in Asia. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What's up, Psychedelic? Just got back from Mother Home. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means, but I like the sound of it. Yeah. Humming Mother's Club is what I'm thinking. Maybe. <laughs> it's like a yoga class for mothers, yeah. It's like a yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Very informative silence. That's yeah. it. Yeah. That's what you can uh, expect from Mike. Uh, so, Mike, who are you going to be playing today? I will be resuming uh, my perfect, impeccable Asian accent as Ryuk Mazuko. <laughs> who is an assassin from the Mizuko clan. Uh, and their whole shtick is that they forge packs with demons and devils to become better killers, as we have seen on the show already. Nice, indeed, indeed. I was going to say I go back from class. Oh, well, I prefer our version. I like the idea that you came back from a mother's humming class. Uh, yeah, of yoga. It's just like, yeah. you minister the one position at home the whole time. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest, I'd go to that class. Yeah, for like an hour and 45 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's too long. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> Oh man, and we have Tool School back with us today. What's up, Tool School? Hey, how you doing? I am uh, I'm wrestling with the fun and excitement of audio electrons not going where I want them to go. But uh, <laughs> so bear with me uh, during the stream, guys. I will do my very best, and uh, we might have weird sound things happening all through this fun and excitement. So. Uh, Yay, here we no. go. Uh, I'll be playing Gavin, uh, our paladin of St. Cuthbert, uh, and uh, we will be uh, seeing what uh, crazy new uh, things uh, he gets uh, involved with as we keep on this journey, because it seems like every time he ventures into the wild, he does seem to bump into something new and exciting. So Some shenanigans along the shenanigans way. Shenanigans for sure. <laughs> Indeed. Yes, uh, Josh today is uh, in the center of all the floods, um, so exclamation point absent, probably dead. Cause of death, most likely in this case, is drowning. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I should make that command, like, have a variable cause of death. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like the roll. So each time we get a different one, like, drowning, death by Kitsune, um, <laughs> death by Dom. So I actually made a command like that for Ankbot. So if you need those, <laughs> so let me know. I can, I can generate that. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> yeah, Josh died, my friends, unfortunately. Um, probably drunk. Yeah, most likely. Um, what's up, Daniel? So, uh, quick internet update. <laughs> Death by Green Fire. <laughs> it's just delicious, good guy Fire. I don't know what you're talking about. But, um, <laughs> yes, um, quick internet update. Uh, internet died earlier. Tall School's hosting the stream. The internet says it's good again. I don't know if I believe it, so... Uh, we were playing it safe today, um, and we'll see tomorrow. We're going to try again later. But um, let's do a recap of where we are in the story, because it has been an amount of time equal to seven days or a week um, from which we last played. So uh, everyone's forgotten everything which happened, including myself. Um, so um, the beanbag of recapping is going to be thrown towards Mike to start us off here, and I'll try and... Try and uh, muddle it through with you as well, my friend. But um, I seem to remember that we were, you, you kind of did a little side quest. We did. We like impromptu side quests. We did a side quest to go find the other iron, um, iron masks that were terrorizing other villages that had splintered off from the original right. splinter. It was a fraction of a splinter, a sliver. A sliver. Of iron masks, if you will. Nice. Uh, and they had pledged themselves to the Albionites. Um, and before that, we elected to make up our own side quests, and that is going to go awry sometime soon. Um, I think Ryuk killed several uh, of the guard, not guards, but um, scouts that were scouting for the Albionite army. Yeah. Uh, I think we let like one of them go away. Um, and then I think Squall, you had a Kitsune thing that happened, and you spoke to a god. You want to take that and explain what the hell happened there? Mm. Yeah, yeah. In, in order to uh, appease the uh, gods of chat, I uh, <laughs> did bring back the Kitsune uh, storyline from, like, the first episode, uh -huh. and uh, went off into uh, the... Um, 
uh, up in the mountains looking for uh, just looking for some spiritual guidance. Uh, found a uh, temple of Onare, who is one of the household gods of the uh, culture here of right. uh, blacksmiths and the home and hearth and all those types of things. And uh, while up there, ended up uh, through a viewer decision, uh, ended up now have being a uh, part. Well, not having a. Uh, a lichen hand uh, controlled by the similar rules to Order of the Lichen. So, you know, we now have Gavin who sort of has this darkness, lightness, and uh, spirit of nature happening in him as well. So Lord only knows and uh, what's going on there. So we are moving forward. It's messy. It's uh, messy in there. It, it's, you know, it's gotten very messy because after this happened, another fateful viewer decision, uh, ended up having uh, a demon visit our good friend Ryuk and chatting with him. Why don't you all throw the beanbag back that that's, direction? That's true. Yeah. Uh, Ryuk, we, we teleported uh, to the town we needed to go to uh, through uh, what's called DM Fiat. Um, <laughs> DM, yeah. DM Ex Machina. We uh, teleported to the town we needed to be at. And during this teleportation uh, Doctor Who sequence, uh, mm -hmm. a, a demon spoke to Ryuk and said, I can show you where the sigil is and give you its power uh but the cost is that you kill gavin fjordhammer and i said done <laughs> and then I, sure. I probably i probably popped out of a wormhole and told gavin hey here's the deal i'm gonna kill you i, I have to kill you. <laughs> yes yeah yeah and, gavin, and how did gavin react to that you do you is kind of basically <laughs> so good buddy <laughs> you do you uh, an understanding friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gavin just seems to be a hot mess right now. <laughs> Gavin's a little bit of a hot mess right now, but he has faith that, uh, that you know, their hope still is alive and that things will, uh, things will uh, all work out in the end because Gavin just kind of, he's that type of guy, you know? And uh, actually, while on this mission, the one thing that did happen, uh, you know, the Ga Gavin's whole purpose on this mission was because there was a young girl whose family had all been uh, been killed during the uh, the raising of her village, the village that mm -hmm. Gavin had visited earlier. Indeed. And it was to retrieve her good luck charm. And so uh, on the after after exploding a entire warehouse full of Albionite guns and black powder. Um, Gavin ran back into the burning building t in order to find uh, to find the um, the good luck charms and some of yes. the other charms of the village, and he was able to find those. You uh, thankfully for some uh, for thankful for a, a natural twenty by uh, by a, a, uh, someone I can't remember who gave it to me. It might have been Good Guy Pie. Uh, and then some inspiration later was able to, in fact, identify which of the pieces was uh, was hers, and then burnt and battered after being exploded in a warehouse he uh took out a platinum piece and uh using you know uh sacred flame and his blacksmithing skilled uh fashioned a little platinum uh collar and bell for the little cat uh, good luck charm of this little girl and i had an interesting question come in through pm which uh, to pose to will <laughs> so in gavin's fucked up you know, physiology now that world. uh so he's using sacred flame of saint cuthbert and a hand of the god of you know, the local god of nature and that sort of stuff and the other hand of the raven queen to craft this platinum bell <laughs> it was, you know this is it, the the thing was hashtag this is how legendary items are made you yeah know, while, on a, while on a sacred mission for a little girl good luck charm so yeah i'll just plant that seed as it was planted in my head through a uh, through a uh, a direct message because yeah how does all that affect gavin's blacksmithing skills <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we? yeah. <laughs> yeah we'll have to see um so um <laughs> yes you have a whoever wedding we'll see uh, the wedding has been attempted for a, a couple of weeks now i think we've been trying to get a wedding here um but yes um you managed to um blow up the warehouse take the symbol back and uh, return to the mountaintop fortress. Now, there are some events going on in the overarching campaign that we should be made aware of, I suppose, because that's going to be the agenda of today, I suppose. So 
Oh, right. There's um, actually a story we were supposed to recap. Actually a story. Yeah. <laughs> there's actually like a campaign happening. Um, so, um, yeah, let's, um, it's, it's, it's correct. That's correct. Psycho is Monday. Um, so, uh, Mike, could you try and recap it just in broad strokes for us? Um, what is, what is going on, I suppose? Yes. Um, like typical historical documentation would provide you, white man is bad. Uh, and the Albionites are attacking. <laughs> white, uh, man uh, is bad. Yeah, white man is bad. <laughs> the, uh, the Albionites are the... Pseudo- Say the three white guys. <laughs> ...are the pseudo-England of this uh, setting. And uh, everyone else is the pseudo-East of this setting. Um, and so they are, the, the Albionites are attacking the East and trying to uh, bring them under their sway of influence and make them use their beliefs and, and live under their, uh, their rule of law. Uh, we have uh, swapped sides and worked for the East. Uh, we are going to the Shogun, uh, who is a tangled mess of whispers and lies. Um, there is some demons at play. There is some witches that keep bouncing around that call themselves seers. But essentially, we have gathered their generals the generals are going to go to the Shogun's palace and we're going to talk with the Shogun to try to get this Albionite uh, samurai war settled. And also myself, Gavin, and Shin all need to find the samurai sigil, which is either an item or a philosophy or something that gives you great power. Yes, indeed. Uh, sounds historically correct. That's it, yeah. Um, this is actually based off of um, <laughs> historical events, if you... Uh... Read in deep enough. Uh, if you follow along, this is just Sun Tzu's Art of War. The whole this is Art of War. My, my chapter. Yeah. You, you could write a book report off this, really. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, I mean, oh this is actually just me trying to get back into uni um, <laughs> by showing them my my knowledge of this era. Yeah, um, it's funny because um, Josh actually bought um, Sun Tzu's Art of War just for this campaign, yeah. so. and it's yeah been so handy. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's really coming. <laughs> Oh man, the samurai is a woman. Gavin, Gavin has to marry it. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. So that's where we are today. You guys are at the mountaintop fortress. There is a um, the uncensored version of history. Yeah, well, history is written by the victors. England are the victors. I am writing history. This makes sense. Yeah. So um, yeah, there is uh, the samurai fortress, which is the Iron Court, uh, which is like a couple of days' journey away from you guys. You also have the Lagrung with you. Let us not forget these. Um, Fish, uh, frog people um, who are from the swamps and the marshes um, who are kind of fighting on your guys' side. The adepts with poison um, and also potentially slavers, um, <laughs> probably definitely slavers, um, but certainly trying to help you guys out to defend their home. And um, you've got to convince the, uh, the Shogun to get to war so you guys can go and find the samurai sigil. So um, let's let's begin with you guys back at the um, the war camp. Um, today is the day that everyone is marching back um, to the Iron Court. Indeed, some of the generals have already begun their journey whilst you guys were away. Um, so um, many of them are heading up to the court, and uh, there's only maybe like fifty percent of the um, armed forces uh, in the area currently. Um, so uh, the rest are traveling to the Iron Court to, to speak. Um, of course, Ryuk does have an agreement where if no one, if the generals don't do what he says, he is going to murder them. That's true, yeah. But so, I mean, I think he frankly has that agreement with a lot of people, whether they know it or not. It's kind of unspoken agreement that Ryuk has with every person he meets. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so essentially, um, you guys are waking up this morning um, after your journey last episode um and uh yeah let's, let's just hear like what you guys look like and what your morning routine is so let's start with uh start with Ryuk. so Ryuk is a tiefling uh so he's got like a reddish skin tone uh his hair is shoulder length and slicked back uh and his horns go around the uh, uh, like they slick back with his hair up the top of his head uh and he is dressed basically in head to toe uh either boiled black leather armor or um whatever scraps of black like ninja-esque clothing he can find um, from tip to tail. Uh, and in that, in those folds of his robes, there are a myriad of weapons hidden there. And uh, he starts this morning the same way he does every morning. He's in his small little tent, um, his small little uh, uh, yurt, 
a personal yurt that he uses. Uh, and he has a small fire set up in there. And there's incense burning, different different sticks of incense all around the fire. Um, and then all around the area, like hanging from the ceiling, are uh, talismans on different chains or stickers or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is praying to something uh, over his flaming incense. Nice. Cool. Uh, same questions for, uh, for Gavin. Well, Gavin, uh, as I said, he is a uh, paladin of St. Cuthbert. He's a kind of a giant of a man. He's about 6'9 or so, about 270 pounds, really muscularly built. He was a blacksmith for uh, almost uh, 35, 30 or 35 years of his life. Um, uh, working uh, with big draft horses and plow horses and that type of stuff. He has a shock red hair, uh, red beard, uh, sort of paler skinned, uh, kind of Nordic uh, looking. Uh, he actually looks younger now than he did before because he de-aged six years due to a wild magic surge uh, last uh, episode. Um, and uh, But uh, like I was saying before, he has uh, one hand which is permanently sort of desiccated, kind of looks almost like an x-ray. Uh, that is uh, dedicated to the Raven Queen. Uh, it sort of drips necrotic energy off of it that falls to the ground as like a black sort of raven feathers type idea. Uh, he also currently uh, has the other hand, which looks normal when he wants it to, but uh, twice, uh, basically twice a day, he can uh, transform it into this uh, sort of fox uh, werewolf claw hand that uh, is from uh, the Onari, uh, the god of Onari, who uh, from the last episode as well. So Gavin kind of has this weird thing going on, but for the most part, uh, don't think of him as a paladin in shining armor, plate armor. He is, uh, he wears sort of kind of, kind of a common looking armor. It's splint mail, but the splints themselves are made out of pieces of metal that uh, he, um, has picked up along the way and formed into the actual splints of it. So it's sort of this patchwork of different types of metal, different thicknesses of metal. They all sort of have a story and it sort of tells Gavin's story of his adventures. Uh, When you don't find him out just trying to help people, you will find him in the kitchen cooking with his giant skillet that he uh, names Agatha. Uh, It is huge and actually, in fact, it doubles as his shield. So, you know, out on the battlefield, uh, you know, He's sort of this really weird giant of a man uh, using a, a giant frying pan as a uh, as his shield and his big blacksmithing hammer as his weapon. Nice, cool. Um, did you go over the uh, the routine there? Just what you got up to this morning, I guess. Uh, get up to in the morning. He's again. He's in the kitchen. He's cooking. He just cook, he, uh, yeah. he eats eighteen eggs every morning. A big you know, rasher of bacon. Uh, he's always in making friends with everyone in the kitchen because he likes to cook his own and sort of uh, you know chat with people, share recipes, see what kind of spices they use. He's probably learning the the wonders of ginger and other sort of Asian spices uh, in his cooking right now. But uh, yeah, no, that's his morning. He's usually up early. Uh, you know, might be doing any kind of repairs to his armor. He sort of gathers his thoughts over a forge, an anvil, uh, to sort of get back in touch with himself and always tries to be in service to people, whether it's a broken pot or a broken wagon wheel or something like that, making horseshoes, things along those lines, and getting breakfast, because games. <laughs> games, man. So, um, this morning, whilst you guys are uh, be praying and cooking and stuff, um, so, Ryuk, um, you have a kind of brief moment whilst you're praying, and you, this is when you kind of can commune with your demonic inner being um, somewhat more easily, um, that the, uh, the demon comes to you again uh, and uh, just says into your head, Ryuk, have you considered my deal? Um, yeah, Ryuk responds back. He says, yes, sir, great demon, I have considered your deal, and I have spoken with the Kevin Fjordhammer. He says that uh, if I, I must do what I must do, but when the time comes, you will know my choice. Either Gavin will lie dead, or we do not have a deal. Excellent. Very good. I, I'll leave you to it and enjoy your prayers. Thank you, great spirit. And he like, so, bows yeah. to no one. <laughs> yeah. then, he, then he leaves his tent. 
<laughs> Everyone looks alright. Like, so um, outside, you see the, the scarred man. Now this is his like area. Um, or like, this is uh, his his garrison, I suppose. Um, and so um, he's always here, despite the others traveling to uh, various different. Um, uh, like they go off to the Iron Court, but he's staying within here. Um, and he says, uh, "Right, you're right. Sleep well." As well as one that can be expected when the war is on the horizon. Hmm. He nods uh, and says, uh, "You're off to the Iron Court today." Yes, we will take the generals, and I will take the big guy, that we will go to the Shogun again. Some of the generals are already on their way. Uh, Yasuda has stayed behind, though. She said she wanted to travel with you back. That makes sense. She is our charge. Yeah. What are you going to do with her? Well, the original plan was for her to take control of the Iron Mask and then kill all the generals, but that has not planned out well for us. So... As Gavin says, we must think on the fly. Good luck with that. <laughs> I wouldn't want to cross your suit of myself. She's a scary bitch. Well, I have done just that, and she seems to have caught out. Hmm. Interesting. I guess the news of her brother's reveal somewhat shook her. Hmm. Anyway, uh, looks like Gavin's uh, off eating all those eggs again. You might want to stop him before he... Uh... <laughs> ruins all our supplies <laughs> he eats us enough for one army himself and then he'll uh, take his leave and go head over to wherever wherever Gavin is making a, I assume a loud Gaston-esque show of how much food he can put inside of him <laughs> yeah yeah yes, indeed <laughs> the soldiers are like in amazement <laughs> yeah. I wanted that are you gonna oh. eat that <laughs> 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 but we need these eggs for our family. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Gavin, uh, Ryuk uh, comes over towards you. Gavin. Oh, good morning, Ryuk. Do you sleep well? As well as can be expected. Have you thought more about me murdering you? <laughs> of course. We shall see. What we, we shall see what we what happens, shan't we? We shall. Okay. I was not I have sure good if you news. Had I was able to find I was able to find the little girl and, and return her and her village's possessions. Oh. Oh right, the whole where we left. You had a thing. Okay. Yes. Yes. Good. And I have the crate of, of um what did you people call these? Uh, crate. firearms, I believe. Yes, yes. I will leave them here with the Scardelia Nightman. He can put use to them. I have no use for these things. Yes, uh, we also have uh, Shin could possibly leave his uh, book to train the uh, his guards. I believe they would be uh, well done uh, mm. to have all of this uh, extra armament up on the walls in the Albionites' march. It would give them some kind of edge, yes. It's it's like safe to assume that Shin is training the soldiers at this point. He's taken on more of a commanding role with the... Uh, Scarred man, I suppose. That's like a trainer. That makes sense. Like him. Yeah, he trained them before, so now that they have gunplay, they can learn some gung fu. <laughs> Get some grungs in there, learn some grung fu. Some grung, grung fu, food, yeah. Man. I'll see myself. What I say? Out. Poison bullets, man. I know grung fu. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine a frog hops along and it just like. <laughs> just all like tongue based kind yeah. <laughs> gross it's a little gross <laughs> gross well so, shall, we, shall we head up to the fortress we've got uh, quite an eventful uh, encounter ahead of us yes it appears we have everything we need I think we should leave the grung here uh, to cover our flank uh, what do you think yes and aid these men here yes uh, they are stocked they are well stocked uh, to hold out for as long as they can and they will either retreat into a impenetrable wall of the palace or the palace will be taken and become one for the people again yes is there anything else you need to set out on the journey I'm wondering if we need some form of community. I wonder if the Scarred Albionite has a way of communicating with us so we could let him know 
uh, if he has a safe retreat or not. You can spot him. He's like he's with Shin, who's training some men at the moment. I walk over to him. My friend, I'm wondering, I've seen various magical means uh, used for communication uh, within the armies and within your own forces. Is there some way for us to be able to send you word whether or not we were successful at the palace? And so you know if whether or not you have a safe retreat in case the Albionites do overrun this uh, village and fortress. They can send runners, um, but usually uh, smoke works best. Different colors uh, signal different things. So success, you put a green smoke up. Uh, red would be bad news. Uh, if we could get some of your... Um your your chemicals to make these colors uh, to take with us I think that would probably be the best way for us to stay in communication with you of course of course he uh, you know runs and grabs a bag for you I'll get someone to do it for him more likely uh, hands you over the bag uh, and says uh, just uh, basically put these on a fire <laughs> goes up red bag <laughs> red bag is red green bag is green <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed <laughs> Or is it? Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's the opposite. It's the opposite way around. If you mix them together, it makes purple, and you're like, I don't know what's happening. Ah, that's pretty. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he says, is there anything else I can do for you before you leave? I believe we are fairly well stocked. Do you have anything you are in need of, Raiku? Raiuk? No, I have everything I have on my person. I'm ready to go. I think we should head out. Oh, I, I do believe you are forgetting your friend. You you look back and you see Puff the dragon. Oh, Puff, um, yes. <laughs> who is, uh, who's like uh, eating some eggs and some bacon. The men are like playing with him. <laughs> Come along, Puff. It's time for us to move along. <laughs> Puff hops, on, hops onto your shoulder and comes with you. What color is Puff? Blue. Blue. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, uh, I mean, Puff's been growing pretty quickly, so he's like this big, and now he's like maybe this big, you know, in the course of maybe a week, so he's, uh, he's growing real fast. He's gonna, he's gonna become a big dragon pretty damn quick. He's a good little eater. He learned from the best. <laughs> you just feed him, like, Yeah, 20. all the time. It's like, I take a bite, he takes a bite. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys are, uh, ready to head off. Um, as you get to the gate, your suitor is there. And she's still got her like uh, iron mask on, uh, full uh, like uh, plate armor, uh, and her horse is ready as well. And she says, uh, "Can I ride with you?" Yes, I think that would be best. Good. I don't exactly want to face the shogun alone. Yes, but I think your information of the palace could be invaluable to uh, to our efforts here. Certainly, if they close the gates and wall themselves in, it's going to be a long path for us. But if we're able to get inside the gates, whether by subterfuge or uh, a more indirect route, I'm wondering, I'm wondering if we might not get in contact with our friend Jack. Uh, who takes care of the the crypts underneath of the palace? Is there other other mm. other? Look at that! I pulled. I'm sitting here looking at my notes. This is why you take good notes. Because <laughs> uh, everyone forgot Jack the Jack burial. Skellington, <laughs> our friend from the from the Halloween episode. <laughs> I didn't forget Jack, but as soon as you said it, I thought of Will's impeccable Jack it's Skellington accent. Yeah. Impeccable Jack accent. Yeah. 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 Jack accent, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> It was awful. Awesome. Was so awesome. Um, she says, do you, do you think the Shogun will, will refuse you passage? It depends on whether he catches wind of that we are, that the generals, hit the plan for the generals to be assassinated is no longer the plan. Will they try and take power from the Shogun, do you think? It depends on what, I think it's going to depend on the Shogun, whether he will return to being the voice of the people. I think he has lost that in his high palace. 
Do mm. you know? I mean, you've been spent more time here. Is there a no, good no, man still mind. there? His mind has grown paranoid. He probably distrusts you, despite the fact that... Well, I suppose you've taken a little longer than he expected. Yes, but behind that paranoia, is there a good man? Is there anything left? Was he ever a good man? I believe so, yes. But... Whether or not that's still left... I... I can't know. None of us I, ever I, can know what's left after someone's been through. I... Yes, I don't trust my own judgment anymore. Well... So, I wish I could say I was hopeful, but honestly... I'm not. <coughs> well... Let us, uh... See what's next. Indeed. Let us ride. And she, uh... She turns and starts riding off. And thank you to Le Leishka for following. Welcome to the event, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. So, she begins to head off, and you guys begin your journey back along with, uh... with Puff, Magic Dragon. Um, what's up, Stick? How's it going, buddy? Um, and, uh, and Yasuda. So, uh, the group of you head back towards the Iron Court, uh, going through, uh, the narrow chasms and ravines. Um, Previously, you would have expected um, some resistance in the form of those creatures, uh, the fiends and abominations that had been uh, haunting you. But you struck a deal with Azuma uh, in order to um, keep those guys away from you and focus them onto the uh, Albionite forces instead, um, seeing as there is a corruption within the Iron Court. Um, and. You're not really traveling alone, you're traveling like through an army who's marching down the chasm. So it's pretty slow at points. Um, you guys have to kind of work your way through a series of troops because you're going on horseback, you're going much quicker than them. But slowing you down a lot of the time, seeing as there's like armies, one army is marching through this one chasm towards the Iron Court. Um, and so it takes you a little bit longer than you'd really like. Um, and, uh, you know, you hear word from the generals that they are beginning to feel. Like, some people have already reached the Iron Court, and our word is kind of filtering back towards you guys about what's going on there. Um, and currently, there's a holdup, basically. So, um, throughout the like latter half of the day whilst you're traveling, it's almost like being stuck in standstill traffic. Okay. Um, and you guys are working your way through that traffic because there's some kind of holdup uh, at the Iron Court, uh, which is stopping everyone, which means that the chasm which you're in uh, is, is holding tens of thousands of troops with nowhere to actually go because they've got to move forwards or go backwards um, and all of them are just kind of standing still at this point. The you guys in a bit of a predicament um, but managing to uh, to push through. What's up, Laura? How's it going? No worries, no worries. All right, we're just getting into it, really. So um, you push through. Uh, Yasuda commands a lot of respect and you guys are like recognizable the troops at this point because you know you've been with the shogun you've been in in and around the area at this point um so you managed to work your way through it slow going until it comes to the evening uh probably around eight seven to eight p.m at this point and you're back at the mist shrouded castle um or the opening up to it essentially um and general kitagawa is here and um he and his kind of retinue of men um, appear to be kind of in cover. And you look up at the, uh, the castle wreathed in these uh, gray mists, uh, and the castle itself is palisaded, um, but there are thousands of troops on the walls, um, and uh, they are, for the most part, all kind of bow-armed. And from what you can tell, from where the general is in cover, along with... Um, the, uh, the rest of his men, they're kind of hiding behind some uh, large rocks. There are arrows, like, peppered into the ground, like thousands of arrows, um, which are kind of like a line before them. And it looks like they're kind of, they're standing in cover out of range because the arrows can only reach a certain point. Um, but there are loads of arrows littered into the ground. Uh, um, and you see several dead men who have been peppered with these arrows and just left there because you can't run out to get them like a no man's land at this point um and uh yeah so essentially you've got um like a 
junction like this, uh, I could probably... Uh, I would roll 20 map, but there's no roll point. Um, so you've got the castle here, and then you've got this bit going up, and then a turn towards the castle, and then the general's sitting on this corner, basically, in cover, because um, I can't shoot around a corner. So that's what you guys are uh, are seeing at this point. What are you guys up to? Uh, yeah, Suda's kind of like frowning. <laughs> Through her mask, you can feel her frown. <laughs> um, and uh, she turns towards you and says... What's going on? We seem to be at an impasse, as I was afraid. Uh, the Shogun has uh, walled himself in. Uh, shall we go up and ask the generals, uh, since they've been here a bit longer, to see what might have started this? Yes, very well. She uh, nods towards General Kitagawa. And you know, there are other generals with him, but... We're not going to name 20 generals because we've got yeah. enough confusing names to, uh, yes. <laughs> to remember at this point in this campaign. So, um, let me back. so uh, you head over to General Kitagawa. He turns towards uh, you guys. He's in cover with his men. Um, what's up, Sway? And he says, ah, uh, oh, my friends who have arrived then. Good. Yes, what, what is happening here? Why are you pinned down by the Shogun's forces? He says, um, as soon as we got here and we entreated to go towards the gate as is custom, an arrow fell by my foot. I called out to the walls to speak with the Shogun. He would not come. I told him that we meant no harm. We were here to serve him, as was our job. And that Dark Demon Slayer just subscribed. Yeah. Hey! Thank you so much, Dark Demon, and we salute you, sir. Thank you so much, my friends. Let's raise a mug of ale in the chat for our latest subscriber, Dark Demon Slayer. Thank you, my friend. The most gentlemanly of scholars. Appreciate it, Thank you. That's awesome stuff. New subscribers, love it. Look at these weird decisions, Rockin. Um, yeah, and he says, uh, and uh, I pushed forward, thinking there might have been a mistake. An arrow landed right here my shoulder. He shot his own leading general. I am not in any harm. My armor withstood most of it. And that was when a hail of arrows came towards us. We retreated, of course, back into cover. Communication is at a standstill at this point. So, so there was no reason why you were fired upon? We did not uh, anger him in any way, as far as I can tell. But I will tell you this. I am certain that you have been followed. And most likely myself as well. Perhaps there was more than one general who was corrupt, no? Who might have told him. Or perhaps someone simply overheard. Or someone told someone that they shouldn't have. I don't know. Indeed. But either way, it seems as if we're not getting any further. Now, I see us as having a few options. We have 10,000 men under my command who are wavering in their loyalty to the Shogun who would fire upon me. These are men that I have fought with for over 20 years. They trust me. They believe in me. And I them. But... At the same time, there are another 10,000 within the Iron Court who seem to be, at the moment at least, loyal to the Shogun. Now, can we fight this war of the Albionites, who number 30, 40,000? If only these 10 here? I know not. It seems to me as if we need our brothers within there, but killing them will only do us so much good. If we fight each other, we we'll lose not only our own men, but theirs too. Reduce both of our forces, exactly what the Albionites want. We need to see what the situation is inside the, inside the palace. We need to see if there are those who are loyal and who, once they understand the situation, might, uh, might aid us or somehow to bring the Shogun around to hearing sense. I agree. Um, 
And uh, can you both, can you guys both roll wild magic? Um, one from Swaybe and one from the good guy Pi. God uh, damn it. Oh wow. Gosh, well, I didn't uh, see those come in. Southern patrons. Uh, actually, yeah, I didn't see those come in. Oh, uh, they if... are uh, southern patron based. Oh, so. okay, gotcha. So I, I, I was worried my alerts weren't working. No, no, I get that sometimes. It's all good. Uh, I'll bring up the table here and we'll see what happens. 70, 73. 70, 70, 73. Right, and 83, 84. Wow, okay. Uh, 70, 73. Target's death will be horrible enough to inspire legends. That's pretty good. Yeah. Like my death or like the next person I kill? Your death. <laughs> That's fair. I'll take that. Um, yeah, I'll take that. That's not yeah. a bad one. Um, and you are 8084, is it? 8384. 8384, okay. Um, 8384. All nearby who've drawn blood in the past day are deaf until dawn. <laughs> so. so. There are some soldiers within the castle. You are deaf until dawn, but you have no way of knowing, knowing which ones or how many. <laughs> yeah. The question is how many, and the other problem is that you don't know that they're deaf until dawn. Right. So, um, <laughs> it's a strange phenomenon. Probably like a few soldiers within your army are becoming well, deaf. But... Uh, well, uh, the quick way for that one is uh, maybe they used a gun for the first time, and when they mm. shot it, it, uh, That's true, yeah. it deafened them. <laughs> Exactly, yeah. So everyone wielding a gun is just, ah! What? Ah! <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, thank you guys for that. But the General Kitagawa says, uh, we need to find a way to get someone inside. Now, the other point here is that Konda controls many of the men within there. And uh, from what I understand, he has reached out to you too. Now, what did you think of the man? Uh, he certainly... He has profit in mind, but I don't think that he is out to harm the, the people. I think he knows that having a population that are happy and uh, with... <laughs> Uh, with money to spend, are it's going to be more valuable to him than a population living in a war zone, or you know, every every man that dies is a customer that dies. I think in his mind, he wants stability, which is never a bad piece. Of course, he's going to take his he's going to take his profit, uh, as any businessman will. Mm -hmm. But I also believe that he has. Uh, he has no ill will in his heart. I see that, yes. <sighs> if we could find a way to have a conversation with Konda, perhaps we could work something out. Well, he was, he was leaving as we left to go to the mountain fortress. Mm. Uh, I, we do not know exactly which way he was going. He just said that he was going west. Uh, we did not encounter him on our journey to the city. Uh, however, we were otherwise occupied for parts of that. The longer but... we wait, the the longer this problem goes on, the more people die in the marshes and in the mountain steps up to here. I feel that if Ponder is not here, as you say, then we are in trouble. If he is on business or elsewhere... Hmm. Well, or if he finished his business and returned before the gates closed. That is the possible as well. Perhaps we could... We have to get inside. I'm I'm wondering if your suitor might know a way, or we made a friend uh, who is in charge of the crypts and the labyrinth underneath the, uh, hmm. the catacombs. I'm sorry, not labyrinth. The catacombs underneath of the palace uh, when we were here last. We actually, uh, <laughs> we owe him a favor, uh, which, we owe him a side quest, but, um, <laughs> but perhaps that is but worth he... exploring. But let me put something else to you, my friends. If, and when, if you can speak to Condor and convince him to strike a deal with you, if he is within there, to gain... <laughs> Forces of the armed forces of it now. That is one thing. If Condor is not there, 
Or the deal which he offers is something which you cannot promise or we cannot promise. And I see only one option, and that is to capture the Shogun and hold him ransom. Take him from power. Now, I will not suggest that you kill this man. This is against our own code to kill a Shogun. But in extreme circumstances such as this, I see no other option but to take him from his seat of power. I look to Shin, who I assume is <laughs> lurking in shadows. <laughs> Shin's like, like, Did you say murder someone? Did you say oh, assassinate? That's my name. <laughs> yeah. Did Shin, you call me? <laughs> you know more of the honor of these people and dishonor of these people than anyone. Uh, what can you tell us if we have no evidence other than our belief and we uh, assault the Shogun, will that, by definition, turn everyone in that palace against us? Or will they, can we talk reason to them? Uh, yeah, he looks to you and he says, there is a great many who will fall in that fight. But I believe, as you said, this Koda, he has his own faction of men. And I know that Ose has her own faction of men as well. So there are at least three in play here. Two can be talked, two can be spoken with. Those devoutly loyal, staunchly loyal to the Shogun, they will not be swayed. Yes, I, the question is, would it be so dishonorable for us to assault, accuse? The ver is the very accusal by, by two outsiders of the Shogun being dishonorable such a slight against honor that there we will be fighting an uphill battle trying to convince them otherwise yeah it's it's probably a risk yeah i mean either way you've got risks because there are going to be some people who are just so diehard loyal to the position of shogun um and care about that tradition more but then there are people who are like you know my family might have died in the swamp or i've got friends down there and they realize that staying here isn't going to do anything to help those people. So yeah, he, he, he kind of he kind of looks to you and he says, he says, what 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 do you worry about this honor for? Look at where look at where honor got your friend Shin. Yes, if there's I, a price. If there is a price to pay for these people to be killed, then the price is the honor. Correct. My honor is coin. I. I'm asking a more subtle question regarding the customs of this area. No, to... you ask a very simple question. If I kill the Shogun, will all of the men fight the Albionites and save your friends at Locandle? The answer is maybe. Oh, well. The question as well is if we stay here and do nothing, and fight the 10,000 men against 40,000, and they will definitely all die. Right. We we cannot stay at this impasse. I think no matter what our next move is, we have to get inside this palace. So standing out here talking maybes is not going to get us anywhere. Well, great. Then, Yasuda. And uh, he looks towards her. What do you know of these creeps <laughs> and this Jax fellow? And, uh, she says, there was a time where the passages would run underneath the castle. I believe that they are disused now, but I know of an entrance. Uh, the Iron Court are privy to the secret passages of the Iron Courts. Should there be assassination attempts or we need to rescue the Shogun from uh, the Iron Court where it had burned down, for instance, or be assaulted, I know an entrance in. Once we're inside, then I could find Jax and, well, we would be inside. We may have to disguise ourselves once we're in, or if we were launching an assault. The problem being that the, the tunnels are so narrow that only two men could fit abreast. So a direct assault within the keep would be very easily defendable by the Shogun's men. It'd be a killing ground, essentially. 
But for a few of us to slip through within to either capture the Shogun or to talk with Konda, that would be doable. Yes, I think to try to... We, well, there's no way we'll be able to sneak an army in through the catacombs, but a specialized group uh, such as us, I think, is our next course of action in order to get us to a place where we can possibly either, as you say, capture, talk to Condor, uh, turn the tide of this so that we can have, hopefully, all 20,000 men of these two factions united against the Albionites as they head this way. And then you can find the Samurai Sigil while we fight. Very well, then Yasuda, take these men to this entrance. And uh, she, uh, she nods and says, let's wait until night falls. They won't be able to see us in. And, uh, he nods. Uh, and she says, uh, we're also going to need some disguises, so come with me. And uh, she looks towards Puff. She says, that's going to draw attention. I mean, he's going to draw attention. <laughs> Perhaps we should leave Puff behind. As, as hard as that might be. <laughs> uh, Puff looks sad. Uh, uh, you speak of what is only common sense, and I must agree with you. I, I'm afraid that uh, there is not going to be a way to hide Puff and keep him safe while we do this. Um, I take Puff off my shoulder. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, stay here, little friend. Uh, because Molly Morph... Molly Morph just subscribed! Hey, for the four months, thank you, Molly. Time is fleeting neath the spell of a well-crafted tale. Cheers for four, here's for another. Thank you, Molly. I salute you. Let's raise a drink. Thank you very much for those four months. Wow, God, time does fly. Jeez. So, uh, he does, he looks down and is, is Puff as I assume, be, uh, yes, he flew to my shoulder. So he's got his, he's he's working on his wings. Yeah. Uh, and I, I lift up Puff, but I said, Stay here with uh, Kitagawa, my friend. Uh, if uh, uh, come, if come can... here, little one. I'm sorry. Kitagawa, I like, come here, little one. <laughs> uh, I say, if I need you, uh, I'll whistle like I did, uh, like I do back then. You know, and he has he, Gavin can do that real high pitched whistle yeah, yeah. it's because I don't blow out <laughs> everyone's ears. But uh, <laughs> I'll whistle for you if, for some reason, if I if I need you. Uh, be a brave little dragon for me, and we'll be back together again soon when all of this is past. <laughs> and I give him a nice choice morsel of, uh, of you know, jerky. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you um, you leave behind poor Pop Puff, um, and uh, Yasuda takes you off into the camp. It's getting darker now, and uh, she is going to. Um, Give you some kind of uniforms, basically. You guys are going to look like the Iron Mask. Um, and so, what she does, she gives you these kind of like death and death masks, which are obviously made out of iron. You just kind of put down like a helmet so it covers your face. And uh, she gives you this like uh, plates armor as well, which is like, you know, pretty heavy, hefty stuff to put on. And like a long cape as well to put on behind you, uh, throw over your shoulders, which kind of completes the look. Um, and uh, she then hands you like these standard issue like katanas that they use um, and then she kind of looks at you and adjusts something and she's like yeah you look like you could be you look like you could be a iron mask good so they do have a mask to cover my face so I don't yeah. not so obviously Albionite and, yeah, then, exactly. and then Ryuk's tail whips behind him <laughs> um, is there a way to keep that Pinned. Yeah, he recoils it <laughs> inside the armor. Did you like uh, tuck that in, buddy? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just see it. You just see it wrapped like a belt around him. Ryuk is uh, dressed to the left today, I suppose. <laughs> dressed in circles. <laughs> dressed in circles. 
<laughs> so she she like shivers and she's like ah cool good then let us go there's a cave entrance nearby like i say i'm not too sure what's inside of it maybe some of those abominations might have made their nest there but with any luck it's just abandoned crypts that jacks occasionally wanders down so um it shouldn't take us long to get within the castle wolves we'll Come follow on. your lead she uh she begins to head inside and um she um well she heads off it's a night and she's probably waited maybe like an hour or so so now it's like 9 10 p.m it's pretty dark around here so um she uh kind of marches you guys off into like a side chasm uh of the uh the one which you're in already and um takes you uh, like an hour or so to get there and there's this kind of like sliver uh, crack in the uh in the cliffside uh which leads into darkness which looks like it leads nowhere um but it's a really tight cruel space you have to kind of go on your um hands and knees to uh to get through and uh it leads you outwards after a few moments into this kind of dark chamber um which is uh there's no light in so she kind of strikes up a torch uh, despite the fact that Riot can see, so she can see, uh, along with Gavin. And um, so her voice kind of echoes in this chamber and she says, uh, oh, Well, it's still here, at least. I think I remember the way. Yes, I, I think so. Uh, and uh, she begins heading off and she says, These are were just used at natural caverns formed here over the centuries. Uh, not many people really know that they're still here because well, no one has any use for them, really. But the Iron Mask, we know. She begins to head through the uh, the caverns. Um, and she says, uh, so once, or if, I suppose, and you guys like climbing at this point, so she's talking as you guys are traveling. Um, and uh, she, so say the Shogun is overthrown from power. What happens to me? It appears as though your life debt has been paid. I have no need for your death. Only the Shogun wanted you dead. I see. So I'd continue my role in the Iron Mask? If that is your choosing. Will you pledge yourself to the people? I would continue to continue to serve but there must be a shogun who would fulfill that role why it's tradition for centuries that's the point of the iron mask i mean there's no iron mask without a shogun there's no shogun without the iron mask i mean who would lead the people it'd be chaos why, why wouldn't could it not be a council a group of people, one from the generals, one from the merchants, maybe one from the common folk, who would, as a three would act as shogun. People spoke of the samurai sigil as being somewhat related to an old Albion legend of King Arthur's round table. The trick with a round table is there is no one position that is more important than the other. Maybe, in fact, the sigil is for us to get rid of the idea of placing all the power in one hand and to let each group that has been fighting so hard for the last decades for who has the most power to instead share it equally around the circle. It seems horribly Albionite-like. Tell me, Gavin, what happened in the end of this legend? The round table. There is always hope that Camelot will return. Mm. That is what it, how it ended. Mm. Treachery always exists. You should know that, Ryuk. Your bread and butter is working with treachery. No. Bread and butter is bread and butter. My job is to kill. I don't worry about the treachery. Where the coin goes, that is where I go. I don't feel like the people would respect a council. I mean, 
this has been going for thousands of years. This sort of thing doesn't change overnight. Yes, but can you think of any of those who we've encountered who could be trusted to not be corrupted by the power? How did your shogun? How did your shogun become the shogun? Oh, he killed everyone else. Hmm. Kitagawa, maybe I don't know. This this is all politics. I just fight. But worth considering, right? I don't know. Kitagawa does seem to be a good man. That is for sure. Your Koda mm. also has his hat in the ring. She spits. <laughs> she hears his name. Merchants. Um, it's uh, at this point that you um, you hear a kind of mumbling coming from uh, up ahead. It's kind of like this very shrill whistle going on. Uh, and you see a figure um, who appears to be like digging in the uh, in the ground um, and she kind of kind of puts a hand up to stop you guys as she's going first and she said that oh I think it could be Jack's but if it's just a brave robber there was someone stealing a sarcophagus around here right uh, yes in fact that is why Jack came to us in the first place <laughs> hmm she <laughs> She kind of narrows her eyes. Uh, you guys can roll me perception checks. Sure. 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 Perception. 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 Pretty close to those retweets, guys. So uh, check it out. Go? Twenty on initiative. I mean, uh, sorry, on perception. Good. Thank you. Hey, I rolled initiative. What? <laughs> I killed everyone. I mean. <laughs> oh. <coughs> so it's funny. Right, perception's pretty damn good. Uh, I got a nineteen. Nine. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, you um, you recognize the like the the bumbling figure of Jacks up ahead. He appears to he does appear to be digging. Hmm. Uh, is this the direction we have to go by Jack? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, Ryuk will walk over to him all nonchalant. Nice. Yeah. Uh, he's um. <laughs> It's like, oh my god! Uh, he like, he sees Ryan like coming up towards him. Oh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. What are you doing down here? Jack, do you not recognize me? Oh, right. Hold on. He takes the helmet off. Jack. Ah! He looks even more scared now. <laughs> I take mine off. Like, it is Gavin. Oh. It's Gavin Fjordhammer. Remember, you came to us. Oh, that's right, my lord. Good to see you again, governors. What are you doing down here? <laughs> he looks like it's definitely not a good thing to see you again. <laughs> what? Jack, you have the come and go of this place. What can you tell us about what is happening above us? Uh, I, I don't know if I should be talking to you, my lords. You see, you know, you, you've been you've been cast as traitors and outlaws and all that lot. How have we been cast as traitors? Well, it's what the Shogun said, isn't it? I don't know, is it? Yeah. Why would he say that? Uh, I don't question the, the word of Shogun, my lord. You know, couldn't take my head off, couldn't he? <laughs> Did he give a reason as to why we are? Uh, Did he, he say said... what makes us? Uh, no, my lord, but truth be told, I wasn't paying that much attention. What about the men firing arrows on their own forces? Oh, I don't know none about that, but all I was just, you know, just down here digging. Have you recovered the sarcophagus? No. Okay. You may need to make a new one. What is that, my lord? I will leave that to you to figure out. <laughs> we will uh... certainly keep looking, but... Uh, travels have not uh, come across either the sarcophagus itself or even a pathway by which they could have removed it other, by, other than by magical means. The time in which we need to find it and the time in which he may need it, maybe. 
two separate timelines. I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds scary. Mm. Uh, so, um, I guess I'll just let you be on your way then. <laughs> He's like backing away slowly. Can on my screen, Will, you are frozen on the funniest face. Oh, really? Uh, you are frozen like this. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> am, I, am I still frozen? Uh, you're intermittently freezing and unfreezing on mine, at least. Oh, cool. Yeah. But you're better now. Anyway, so... Jack, can you point us in the direction to uh, come up inside of the palace? Uh, I suppose I could do that if you... If you didn't show, didn't tell the Shogun nothing about it. Of course not. You know, could have me here, couldn't he? <laughs> uh, it's just that way. Thank so. you, Jack. Good work today. Oh, thank you, Governor. <laughs> he has a strange accent for someone of the East. <laughs> 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 He's a foreign worker, you see. <laughs> Very foreign. I once met a man, his name was um, Ale or Grog, and he had a similar accent. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it uh, looks like we've hit that big, that big 2 0. Oh no. 20. Uh, 20 already? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. So, so, chaps, we're about to come into the. Uh, Shogun's Palace in the Iron Court, which these guys are going undercover because there are a lot of, well, there's an army of 10,000 soldiers who would be willing to kill these guys were they to find out that they weren't actually uh, Iron Mask people. So I'll leave that line in the chat for us some ideas as to what could happen next. I'll get into a straw poll myself, uh, and the most popular decision from the straw poll will happen. So if you haven't uh, already retweeted, we'll do another one at first here, already getting towards there, and if you haven't followed, hit that follow button and join us, and um, we hit 20 followers, you guys get to decide anything which happens next in our campaign. Of course, you can donate to so affect the game as per usual, you can give players Nat 1s, Nat 20s, Wild Magic Surges, and more, and you should be sure, sure to check out the giveaway for the Thunder Master's Guide, the Player's Handbook, and a Monster Manual down below in the chat. So, um... Let's see what happens there. But basically, he points towards it, um, and uh, you go start to head in that direction, I would imagine. Mm. So, um, <laughs> so many wedding ones. I was going to say, imagine what good guy Pi wants. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, it's just, he's oh, going to bring back Emmy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys begin to, to head up towards the, uh, the palace. There's probably another 20 minutes or so of creeping through these. Uh, cavernous, uh, rocky underground darkness uh, until you finally end up um, coming up to a, a passage which leads up to a staircase uh, and this staircase uh, leads into one of the many chambers within the Iron Court. Um, and so uh, the Suda kind of turns towards you guys and says, uh, well, this is it. No going back now. Uh, shall we try to uh, mingle and see if we can pick up on uh, what the mood within is, and especially if Condor is within? Agreed. If we can find Condor, then I say that's one of our best chances. Fighting against the Shogun and his men would not be easy to get in towards him by any measure. Are you able to tell Yasuda where... Uh, where we are, uh, where, the, where this pathway leads out, where this staircase leads. Are we going to be walking right into the middle of the courtyard, or are we in a more... I believe we'll come out near the kitchens. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> the kitchens! Eggs! <laughs> the kitchens, you say? <laughs> I actually might know my way from there. I, 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 cook, I, I cooked Jack a meal. When we thought it might be his last. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, you guys um, do indeed, as you, as you like step up the um, uh, staircases very slowly, you enter the uh, kind of uh, blue broom closet essentially into what opens out into a kitchen area. And you guys kind of step out 
um, <laughs> like kind of awkwardly, like these guys in mail, uh, like in, in plate mail, uh, and like iron masks just step out of a broom closet in the kitchen, um, and the, kind of, the kitchen staff kind of turn to look towards you guys, and they're <laughs> like, you can see like the confusion dawning on their faces, and then they're like trying to look, not to look at you guys because you know your iron mask. But the chef kind of comes towards you guys. He's like, "What? I, what? Don't ask. Don't to tell." And then he winks inside of his helmet, even though no one can see it. No one can see it. He just tilts your head slightly, yeah. in like a really creepy way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, "Oh, oh, okay, yes." Um, and he begins to uh, to back down. The uh, the straw polls in chat, by the way, guys. So go ahead and vote. Most popular decision will happen. So get those votes in. Who did you get? Little blacks, right? That they came at the very end. What was that sorry? Did you get uh, little black anvars? I did. I did. End? Good. Oh God. Oh, no, no, it's in there. It's in there. Look at that. So um, Gavin's yeah, gonna keep you, his uh... mouth shut, knowing he doesn't speak. Like that, his accent's gonna give him away. That's true. So, um, yeah, uh, you guys can head out of the kitchen um, and into a, um, yeah, my food, it doesn't appear to be freezing, that's super weird. Let me close down everything. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that. Um, fuck you, internet. Fuck you. So, um, yeah, you, you head out into the uh, main kind of uh, courtyard palace area, um, and uh, this is where you can see up on the walls the uh, thousands of troops milling around here, you know, um, they're just kind of everywhere at this point. Um, and, um, there's, uh, generals walking around, captains, just regular grunts, uh, walking around the palace, um, and, uh, there are buildings all around here as well. In fact, the, the Iron Court was a place that you didn't really explore outside of the, like, the inner court itself, where Condor wouldn't be staying because he's a merchant, he would be out somewhere within the community. Probably in a very nice place, essentially. Um, and you're kind of heading through. You see the whispers to you guys. Where should we go? I don't know where Kanda lives. Yeah, so the, you have men here still, yes? Yes. Perhaps you should approach your men if they are loyal to you. Do you have any that you trust? <clears throat> She nods slowly. I suppose so, yes. Perhaps your most loyal men could sow deceit. Are there any of the... Uh, is is this <coughs> palace set up like a Albionite palace? Do we... Are there servants who might... Serving servants who would be attending to the uh, the noble guests? And I, I assume Condor will be among those noble guests. Maybe one of these... Maybe one of these uh, kitchen servants could let us know if he is staying here within the palace. That, that could work, yeah. If you speak with them, I can speak with my men. We'll get much... I mean, I believe the longer we stay here, the higher our chances of being found out. So if we split up, we'll cover more ground. Yasuda, Gavin, when you speak to the staff, when you speak to your men, tell them that the Shogun was controlling the demons that have been attacking the palace. Okay. I will talk to Osa. Asa. Osa. Osa? The oh, other yeah, Azuma, yeah. Azuma. Which, Azuma, yeah. Oh, right, yeah, Azuma is your Osa, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, uh, she nods and says, uh, very well, I will speak with my men. You will speak with this witch, and you can speak to the kitchen staff, Gavin. Very well. And uh, she uh, nods and uh, heads off towards her men, leaving you guys on your own within the uh, within the camp. So, what's the plan here? Uh, yeah, Ryuk looks to Gavin. And he says, "Gavin, I will talk to Osa. She has." her granddaughter with her. Perhaps the two of them together, they wield some kind of forces, as we saw with your arm. Um, I will talk to them. I know that she controls the demons. Perhaps we can get their aid as well. And I will tell her, as I had said before, that I will end the corruption. And we will kill 
the Shogun. Do not underestimate her. I believe that uh, she has machinations that go all the way back from my first encounters uh, back in Low Candle. She mm. has plots within plots, so be careful. I will head to the kitchens. I think there are a few people who <laughs> might still be friendly. Uh, some, some cooking friends I made while I was here before who might uh, be willing to lend me some information without turning me in. Good, good. Where should we meet up again? Uh, I assume no better place than back at the broom closet. Perhaps it will look less suspicious if we meet at Usada's. Ah, uh, uh, yes. You saw uh, your <laughs> You're going uh, to go, go through chambers. the kitchen and just like slip into a broom closet. <laughs> I was near the broom closet, not back in. <laughs> um, yes, he, yeah, so he says perhaps it'll look less suspicious if we just go to Yasuda's place. Sure, sure. That will work. Um. Where, where, what will Shin do? <laughs> <laughs> Mope. So, um, Shin mopes. Shin has no idea what he's doing at this point. He's, uh, <laughs> he's back somewhere training some men. Yeah, um, so since, since the men couldn't get in any further than where they are, he stayed back to train them. You know? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what he's doing, sure. So, um, <laughs> sure. <laughs> So um, yeah, you guys um, let's go with um, let's go with Ryuk first then. So Ryuk, you go back towards the, uh, the chamber, um, which um, you saw Azuma's uh, door appear up before. Yeah. Uh, um, and at this point, no one's paying any notice to you. There's tens of thousands of troops around, so they're not really expecting that one iron mask dude should look different. Yeah. Um, and. Um, and for all intents and purposes, like, like your skin color is the same, your general like build is the same as a as a person from the area, whereas Gavin is like gigantic, um, so he might look a little bit more out of place than you. But um, yeah, you uh, you head towards this door, um, and uh, it appears before you once more. Uh, it actually appears before me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He he opens it and walks right in. Then. Cool. Um, you're back in the uh, weird mushroom smelling herbs on the coming down from the ceiling dark dingy room in which the old hag sits in the corner. <coughs> okay. Uh, is the uh, unnamed child seer with her? She is, yeah. Okay. So yeah, he immediately takes off his helmet and he says, Osa, I have returned. It appears under more dire, con dire circumstances than when I left. Mm, yes. There appears that the uh, Shogun is not too fond of your plan. Yes, what has happened in my absence? She says, uh, well, uh, the Shogun must have learned somehow what you're up to. I heard about it. And uh, his mind has become ever more paranoid, obsessed with the sigil and caring for the war. He, uh, he begins taking off all the different pieces of armor and putting them down. Um, it's, it's huge and bulky and he feels like a tin can. And he says, I have a strange new information for you. I was approached by a demon. Uh, I, I believe Gavin met what he believes to be a god or a spirit of the Kitsune. I was approached by a demon shortly thereafter who would lead me to the, to the Samurai Sigil if I take Gavin's life. I know that you know also know where the Sigil is. So it might behoove you to know that there are other parties looking for this. Mm. Also, we have some kind of a plan at work here. Or at least I hope it becomes one with your aid. Yasuda, what is your plan? Yasuda, the woman who now leads the Iron Mask, she is going to send messages out to her most loyal men and spread amongst to the, the troops that the Shogun was actually controlling the demons that assailed the castle. Gavin is in the kitchens now, spreading the same rumors amongst the staff. Mm. Not that you control these, but if you make it look like the Shogun controlled them and have them attack the forces inside the castle, that may sway the vote to allow the other troops to enter. 
And what do I get out of this? I also intend to kill the Shogun. Now she looks interested. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, really? Well, in that case, (laughs) I rather think we have an agreement. Now, before I attempt to kill the Shogun, he had a similar power to Asa, the seer of Low Candle. And when Mm. I plunged my blades into her, she did not die. I saw this similar power around the Shogun. What do you know of it? I might have been concocting a way to combat that. (laughs) She um, goes towards like an old like chest in her room. uh, (laughs) Hobbles over to her old like aging back, pops it open. And uh, she brings out this like long cloth with something inside of it. And she kind of draws back the cloth. uh, And there's this uh, shining, uh, well, glistening, I guess, black, jet black sword uh, within her hands. Um, long sword, sharp as a razor. Um, and uh, she says, this sword here <laughs> uh, might be able to do wonders against the Shogun. At what cost? His life. No, at what cost to me for wielding this dark artifact? Uh, merely the cost was mine I have spent years forging it there is no evil which will consume you should you wield this blade will this remove his power and allow someone else to attack him as well or is it only this blade that can damage him this blade is what will damage him he may be distracted and fight others of course but the blade must be the one to be sunk into his heart. Mm. Then I will take this blade. And he reaches his hand over towards the cabin that she has this in. He hands it towards you. He says, yes, so you will spread this, or you will you will use your demons to attack the men and make it look like the Shogun. To Tonight. His forces. Okay. Tonight an attack will be launched. Good. If you do your work and spread the rumors, then... Once the demons attack, there will be less than rumors. Good, good. Then I will take this opportunity and this chaos to fight the Shogun. Very good. Very good indeed. He takes the weapon and he kind of like figures out a way to put it somewhere. Like he puts it in between like folds and his, 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 uh, his stuff. And then he starts strapping the armor back on to cover up this massive weapon. <laughs> and I will take my leave. Once you kill the Shogun, our deal still stands. I will show you the sigil. Yes, this is good. And we can discuss this demon's power, perhaps after that. That would be for the best, yes. Well, safe travels to you, Len Ryo. I leave you now. And he goes back towards the weird hut door. Hmm. And uh, she uh, she watches you go... <laughs> As you step out and um, leave, uh, the door closes behind you and then disappears once it's closed, as if it were never there. Nice. So back to Gavin. Gavin, you go back to the kitchen area. So yes, uh, Gavin goes back. Does he see anyone, any of the cooks who happen to be around uh, or... Um... Yeah, that he might have, you know, again, Gavin talks while he cooks, you know, he's been in there, had breakfast a couple mornings at the palace, Uh, he cooked a meal for Jack. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, uh, I mean, you recognize people. Uh, Oh, and thank you to Valkyll for following, welcome to the event, my friend, you're a gentleman and a scholar. Um, Also, uh, straw poll wise, it looks like we do have a uh, a winner for the vote, um, which is uh, the wedding of Gavin and Signe. Uh, I actually want to do this as like probably the last scene of the campaign next week. I think that'd be a really nice finish. Yeah. Scene rather than just randomly have it now, uh, whilst we're like high tension and stuff like that. So I think what we'll do is next week, I'll make a note of it, do the uh, wedding uh, wedding scene right at the end. That's okay with you guys, because then um, we don't break up the uh, impending action um, here. But thank you guys for that. And we will, we will have that wedding. <laughs> 
I love hey, it. good guy pie got after after what four or five weeks of trying <laughs> at least at it. least seven uh, viewer decisions. Yeah. <laughs> Perseverance. <laughs> Gavin's getting hitched. Fairly so. Fairly so. So um, yeah, you guys. Um, so Gavin's in the kitchen looking for yes. Uh, looking to see if, if somebody recognized you know seemed friendly and you know he knows that potentially since jack told him that we've been labeled as traitors he it needs to be someone that he does you know did seem like they might trust them that maybe they shared a recipe or you know you know you got them being Absolutely. nice maybe he repaired someone's pot you know or something along the thing someone who you know uh he might does he find anyone along those lines absolutely so um you've got you've got friends within here who um you you remember you know who would probably be like wouldn't immediately kill you or turn you in yeah right. turn you in. so I, I sort of walk up behind uh, uh, uh sally and uh <laughs> good old sally good old sally uh, <laughs> sally looks so sally kind of she Feels your presence behind her. And she's, oh, oh, you look, do I know you? And I, I, yes, uh, you, you might know my cooking better than you actually know me. Does, I assume she recognizes the Albanite voice. voice. Yeah, and she's like, Gavin? Shh, yes. What are you doing here? They they're want your head. I know. There's troubling news uh, in our. In our adventures, we have discovered that the the attacks, the demons that have been uh, harassing the castle, are in fact a plot, a plot by the Shogun himself. We've heard, or we're trying to, we're trying to find whether or not uh, Condor is in fact in residence here. Did he make it back before the gates closed? I believe so. Yes. Yes. Do you know where he's staying? We think that he might be our only hope. The Shogun can't be behind these attacks, surely. I will tell you, it is beyond confused. I will tell you this, whether it's the Shogun or not, it's certainly corruption within this within these walls that is responsible for these attack for these demon attacks. Yeah, that's well. That's much more Gavin. Yeah, instead of telling the lie about the Shogun, he probably said that. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, it's there is a corruption within these walls that is at the heart of these attacks. We cannot pinpoint it, or whether it's multiple sources, but there, it does exist, and as long as it does, the whole the land and all the people are at risk. Oh, if you're looking for Condor, you can find him. He's on the eastern side of the block. His his uh, buildings are all together. They're, they're gigantic. They're several story high. They have his symbol on them. Is there a servant's route to get there? Yeah. Yes, yes. Let me show you. I'll just leave this on the hob. And she, yeah. <laughs> she leaves the food on. As we um, walk away, Gavin sticks his finger in and takes a taste. Oh, your goulash was always the best. <laughs> so um she um yeah she leads you through like servants like back quarters uh, places where any servants can basically walk down um and um she says she reaches a certain point maybe 10 minutes in and she says if you follow this just forwards and first left uh and second right then you should get towards uh, condor's building thank you I do appreciate it, and I appreciate your discretion in all this. Hopefully, we will be able to restore hope to this castle and your people soon. My brother was attacked by those creatures. Uh, anything I can do to stop that from happening to anyone else? I mean, there's barely much left of him. Tell me, what do you, what do you know of the Shogun? What are your impressions of him? You can be frank with me. We're we're here and alone. I. I'm trying to make sense of all this, and being an outsider, it is, it is difficult. Do you think? Um, do you know him? Do you, have you served him? Do you know what do the servants say about them? How does he treat the servants? I find that's always a good judge of a man. He treats them like 
Afro Desperado. Welcome to the Adventure <laughs> Afro. You're a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> um, thank you for joining us. Thanks for squeezy flow as well, something like that. So um, she says, uh, well, uh, I have a, a niece. She's, well, she works within the private chambers. She kind of gives uh, you a... Yes, I, <laughs> I've... I visited and yes, no, the, <laughs> I saw I saw his concubines. I assume she that's what. She oh, um, and uh, he, she's like, uh, yes. Well, she says that, from what I can gather, his moods are rather mercurial. One moment he will be on top of the world, treat them kindly, and the next rages take hold of him and he's barely the same man it seems that he's very paranoid about losing what he has does anyone visit him before these mood swings is there some is there a regular visitor or anyone who uh, does there seem to be a did she mention that there might be something some new outside force at work a person who might be causing him the distress and the change in mood. He does meet with the lady, Osa, occasionally, but I don't know if those are two things are connected or if it's just news of the lands which upsets him. She didn't say any detail. I mean, she could have a tongue cut out for saying such a thing anyway. As could I. I As understand. Could we... So, Don't worry, your secret is safe with me. I, I appreciate your uh, your candor. I know he also meets with Condor, so... But then he meets with a great deal of people, so... I'm, I'm sorry, I really should get back. I think it's going to burn. I understand. And, uh, um... Sally. Good old Sally. Good old Sally. Good old Asian Sally heads off um, towards uh, the kitchen once again, leaving you in the corridor. So I continue down the corridor yeah. to Condor's door, whatever, where it is marked with Condor's his symbol. Condor's condo. <laughs> yeah, Condor. Condor's condo. He's <laughs> got a very nice little condo he's built. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, you follow the route for another five minutes, first left, second right. Uh, and uh, you do indeed see this great big building with uh, guards all around it, traders all around it as well, with the symbols of Condor's trade all over it. It's quite um, quite recognizable. And um, there's like great big doors which are open to visitors and guests. So it looks like, um, you know, they're open for business, basically. Um, it's not like, it's not a military site, but he does have guards. Um, but it's kind of like, go in and speak with Condor and buy his wares and, you know, that kind of thing. Gotcha. So yeah, Gavin will, Gavin will go in and uh try to seek, a, be discreet about seeking an audience with Condor, knowing that his voice will probably give him away. Yeah. What you what you gather from like hanging around for a few minutes in here is that it's a marketplace, people are buying things. It's got like Condor's name on it, but to actually speak of Condor, you have to be like uh, a big businessman or a, like an important trader. Like some dude looking to buy some fish isn't going to speak with a man himself. You know, he's got representatives. Right. Um, and there are back doors which are guarded by like bouncers um, from. It's like a, it's like a theater almost. You know, like um, he's got his like uh, dressing rooms in right. the uh, in the back. Yeah, I got to get past the velvet rope. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I look around and I look at his some of his wares mm -hmm. and I look at the box that was personally given to me by Condor um, is the box that I have, you know, like one of his, you know, a different or, you know, have a premium seal yeah, on it or like is a it a much nicer type thing. idea. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to take a, a gambit and uh, say, uh, I go up to the velvet rope and I have the box of, potions with his personal seal on it uh, mm -hmm. with me and, and ask the gods and say uh, and show it to them and say I've still got my iron mask on Kondo said uh, that whenever I needed anything 
to present this box and I would be let through to see him as it was his personal, uh, from his personal collection. And I, okay. and I kind of look at the box uh, and uh, one of them well, kind of uh, looks to the other. Run me a persuasion check. Um, and thank you to Anti-Fusion for following. Welcome to the Avenger, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. This is going to be ugly. Come on. <laughs> uh, I do have one. In, I do have one inspiration left, so I I will use Please. my last inspiration that uh, people have given me. Good idea. Because <laughs> this one's got to count. Persuasion. <laughs> come on. Come on, baby. Let's see. <sighs> Shit. Really. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. A nine. So, like, the guy might be inclined to believe you, but he's struggling with, like, the voice. Um, so he's like, Iron Mask, you do not sound... You sound Albion. I am, in fact, Albion. I am here... on a trade mission and need to speak with him directly. Please let him know that Fjordhammer is here and needs to speak with him. Iron Mask? Oh, are you Albion? He's like, he's like so he's, he's confused. I am using this so I'm able to move freely about without like, get, with discretion as Condor advised. He's like, we're going to need to check that. Uh, and um, Please do. Please yeah. let, ga- let Condor know that I'm waiting for him. He goes into the uh, the back room behind the door. Uh, you hear him shouting, Evil Kupu, thank you for following. Welcome to the event, my friend. You're a gentleman and a scholar. But after that weird brief aside, um, he, <laughs> he goes and speaks to Condor. Um, and uh, it's like a... A minute or two of the other guy just like crossed arms like looking at you like like he's ready to like take you on uh it's kind of like sizing you up in case the guy comes back and he just kind of like he gives gives you a red um he comes up to about here on gavin so. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh the guy comes back um and he's like you can come through no funny business of course and uh, leads you into a back chamber um, and um, opens up a, another door beyond that one into this very kind of lavish chamber um, in which you can, uh, you see Konda um, and uh, a bunch of his like, these boxes of uh, wares all around um, and fine wine, fine dining, uh, lots of excellent food around and you know, he clearly lives a very lavish lifestyle as Konda. He's by no means like a simple peasant boy looking to do good, you know. Um, right. He's clearly stinking. He's a businessman. He is, yeah. Um, and he, like, sends away his, like, secretary uh, as you come in and says, uh, well, this is a surprise. Hmm. Gavin Fjordhammer in my halls. A traitor. Hmm. Apparently so. It, these are These are strange times we find ourselves in. Well, easy to blame an Albionite, no? Uh, yes, it is. That is why, of course, I'm wearing this. And I do take my mask off. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> can we speak with Candor, Condor, here in your condo? <laughs> <laughs> this is my Candor condo. <laughs> Would you like some candy? <laughs> ah, there you go. <laughs> He says, of course, we can. Uh, no one... Uh, the wolves do not have ears here, at least. The same cannot be said for the Iron Court. Yes, I've found that to be the case. So what is what is your situation and the situation here? The gates are closed. We have 10,000 men in the other half of the generals just within the ravine outside being denied access into the Iron Court. I hear that... Uh, Plots within plots have been revealed and hidden. It and seems to me as though the Shogun has finally lost whatever respect I had for him, as well as many of his men. Fighting against Kitagawa, shooting Kitagawa, as the rumor is, 
around town. I can confirm that. Unacceptable. We plan to make a move. If not for simply our own sanity and those of our people, but the army outside as well. I mean, there's a war to be fought here, and there's no use us just sitting here with 10,000 troops outside ready to be butchered in a gully. And the other 10,000 safe within these walls, for now at least, but they'll starve us out over winters. So, I believe a move must be made. How many there are jobs these... here I can buy. How many of these men here can you depend on? Potentially half. There are those who I've bought, uh, half of them who are with me, but there are others who are too loyal to the Shogun. Once we take power, we will have a, a riot on our hands either way, but whilst these men are still in power, I feel like uh, they will just cause more and more trouble for us. My shady friend, uh, Ryuk, mm. has begun a... You, dude, you, you can cast darkness. <laughs> <laughs> He's shady as fuck. He uh, has a plot that he is trying to spread the idea that the demon attacks on the castle and on the surrounding areas are in fact uh, being orchestrated by the Shogun uh -huh. himself. <laughs> I like this plan. Uh, he is spreading word, uh, spreading word throughout the castle. Uh, I myself am saying only that the demons come from a corruption from within. My uh, my skills in deception uh, do not sit well with me, and usually do not go over well. I am a poor liar, as I'm sure you've discovered yourself. <laughs> However, if you could get word to some of your men, some of your bot men, to start spreading this rumor, spreading this uh, this subterfuge, do you think the other 5,000, the other half, could be swayed if they felt that the Shogun had entered into some kind of unholy pact? If there was even the hint of devil worship or such things a connection and I believe that argument could be easily won it seems as though this right now is our in the timeline that we have is the only viable solution we have a I, I have it on good authority that there will be a demon attack tonight that appears to be from the shogun himself within these walls it's getting late. Uh, hopefully this attack comes soon. Well, the rumor needs to spread. However, I know bad news spreads fast in enclosed places, and I don't think it will take long for this to spread. Once, Luckily, uh, I run the mill. <laughs> yes. I figured you might be the best source of uh, swaying the populace. Hmm. I will have the word sent out immediately. We'll do what we can in limited amount of time. And hopefully Ryuk can uh, perform his side of the deal. Condor, as you know, I'm a simple man. But I must ask you, what do you expect to get out of all of this once this unrest is stopped? How do you fit into this? I believe you to be a good man, but in this land it seems as though everyone has a price and an, and an angle. And I believe yours to be only business, and certainly your own profit, which I cannot hold against you. Is there another reason that you are in this game? Well, uh, you might have Gavin just... holds on to Signe's symbol while he's asking. Sure. Um, and uh, he says, uh, you might have noticed the way the samurai here treat us merchants. You might have noticed the way that the Shogun speaks of us. And, well, let's be honest here. 
Only a few of the population actually choose the samurai life. The rest of us are just simple people. Probably a tenth of the population actually live as samurai. Very elite culture, very disdaining, disdainful towards us. In fact, they hate us, they hate us so much. And yet all we do is try and help everyone. True, we make our money, we are selfish and greedy, but this hatred towards us is something which I cannot abide. My own father, he did everything in his life. He worked every day of his life hard. And uh, his dream was to retire at the age of 60. He died a few years before that, after he'd worked himself down to the bone. After, well, the samurai taxed him over and over. Incredibly hard. He was just a farmer, simple man bombing in the rice paddies down in the marshes. It occurred to me that this was not all right. All was not well in our land. And while I accept and want the samurai to be a part of us, I do not believe that the Shogun, at least this one, really cares about everyone else other than his own way of life, the samurai way. So it occurs to me, as were the Shogun to be overthrown, then a better way of life could be seen for everyone else. So, whilst I am selfish and I wish to earn money and power, of course, I do believe that we can do some good at the same time. I'll insight check just because. Sure. I'll give you an advantage for having Signe's uh, ring. 15. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't appear to be lying. Okay. I mean, the, st the story seems to Hold I mean, make sense with what you've seen. So, once the Shogun is removed, I have... What do you see becoming the new rulership over this place? What do you think of... Is, is the tradition of having power this way, all in one person's hands, something that... I think in in older times it worked brilliantly. I think sometimes when populations are growing, when the cultures are younger, people need direction. They need a strong leader in hard times sometimes. But when that hard leader turns against his own people, then that is something we cannot abide by. Your Albionites may have something in your communities in your councils and democracies. I'm not adverse to the idea that there are checks and balances along the way. Because one man in charge of everything, as we have seen, men cannot be trusted. I myself am a terrible liar in that I lie very well. <laughs> yeah. So put me in charge and I can tell you that things would go to shit. But if there were checks and balances to stop me from doing that, then someone such as myself. And I do not wish for the seat of Shogun myself. I merely wish to do business. Then that person would, it would be harder for that person to be corrupted, I believe. But the problem there being convincing the population of that. Yes. Is the legend of the samurai sigil powerful enough to bring the population around is it an old fairy tale or is it something that uh, if it reappeared that they would accept i think the symbol is powerful enough i mean it's been in legend for thousands of years well it seemed to be true it's like your holy grail yes. you i've heard it compared to that often hmm. what i uh, wonder is if it's really the, the comparison is really to the grail or to the quest and the group of men who were on that quest. Well, your grail is not real, surely. The, it is a uh, sentiment. Yes. It's a story to teach values, no? <laughs> At least that's what I took from it. But I, I don't read your language so well, so maybe I misunderstood, but it seemed to me to be a lesson. In yes. In working together and 
Correct. It is a le- it is the lesson, but there are many men who corrupt that lesson by thinking that it was a quest for eternal life, and not, you know, they want the Grail because they felt that it was an object of power that would give them immortality. They didn't understand that it was the quest itself that was the lesson, not the reward. That the reward is a fantasy, a vision, a, uh, a mirage, so to speak. That the, the journey and the path that one takes is where one finds themselves, which is the true grail. As I say, the uh, journey is more important than the destination. Yes. Hmm. I've oh. taken too much of your time. I have one last question. Hmm. Is Kitagawa a good man? Kitagawa is a good man. Yes. But the thing with Kitagawa is that he's a military man. He thinks in simple ways, simple solutions, as he has been taught to. He's not been taught to think for himself as such. And so his problem solving abilities hmm. often come in military fashions but he is a good man at heart he means well very good I will leave you to your business and appreciate your help in uh, maybe uh, turning the tides in our favor agreed well once your attack happens tonight in the morning we'll make a move against the shogun capture the iron court for the people Knowing the people involved, you will know you will know when uh, the attack is to come. It will be flashy and impressive. Yeah, you actually hear a scream outside at this point, um, out, like a blood curdling, like. That might be our cue right there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he like uh, he like grabs one of his own like custom made swords that he sells and puts on his hip, uh, and says, "Let's take a walk." And uh, let's do. Uh, as you guys like head out, his bodyguards like form up behind him, and um, we're gonna say that uh, Ryuk is. I guess no, you guys are back to meeting his suit, but we'll say that Ryuk is out here for the sake of bringing bring him right back in for that. Um, and uh, you know, you guys are. I put my mask uh, back on. Horrible scream, uh, and you look over to like one of the sentries on the wall who's just been like grappled and his face has been ripped off by one of these abominations. Uh, as it all looks like hundreds of them are kind of like barreling over the walls um, because they can climb really, really well, these creatures. Um, And they're incredibly camouflaged in the dark. Uh, And they've kind of jumped over the wall and they're starting to kind of butcher um, the uh, soldiers on the uh, uh, walls. Um, And you guys basically kind of bump into one another, we'll say, um, as you're you're walking through here. Um, And... uh, Kanda says, Ryok, it seems like your uh, side of well, your side of the bargain is being upheld. I have no idea what you are talking about. The Shogun is behind these attacks. <laughs> he says, ah, yeah, ah, mm. yeah, sorry, I mistook you for him for a moment there. Yeah. Uh, we should, um, I think we should leave them to him. Yes, yes, what is uh, the best way to get to the Shoguns? Uh, Chambers. I have a question. Before the shotgun? Yes. <laughs> He's kind of like. <laughs> um. Well, I suppose. Currently, a lot of his men might be dealing with this issue. Hmm. Just kind of looking over. So he might be a bit lonely right now. Hmm. That is good. Perhaps uh, we should give him some company. And, uh, like, he he buckled all of his armor in a way that it could easily get out of it. Yeah. Unbuckles and all of his stuff, all the plate starts to fall off. And he's holding one of the potions that Immy gave him. Yeah. Uh, and it looks like smoky liquid clouds as he pops the top and drinks his potion of gaseous form. Gaseous form, oh, yeah. And then yeah, so nice. into a cloud and begins <laughs> flying off towards the paddles. <laughs> so it's like, kind of like... Ah, Imi. <laughs> and uh, he looks to uh, uh, Gavin and he's like, should we join him? Uh, I believe so. He could 
easily find him, get himself into trouble uh, on it, left on his own. Um, I will do this though, as Gavin looks around, do the demons seem to only be attacking soldiers or are there like women and children and civilians in danger? Most of the soldiers on the wall that seem to be attacking at this point, yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the thing so, is that the soldiers have like tens of thousands. Once they mobilize in like 10 minutes time, they're bound to overwhelm the fiends. It's not like the, the castle is in danger of being overrun by these creatures. Right. It's just unlikely to take casualties along the way and spread fear. Mine's more that Gavin doesn't trust uh, Azuma to keep that in her zeal that she would put others at risk other than soldiers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, but she it, seems to be holding it, holding it to just the fighting men. Yeah, at, okay. currently at least. Yeah. <laughs> I believe we should let's let's follow him. Cool. So you guys uh, rush through. Um, and is it already Tuesday? I guess it is. And no, it's not. I guess if you're in Europe, it is. Um, but um, yeah, he um, he kind of rushes off with uh, his couple of bodyguards. Good see to being. Um, and uh, you guys rush towards the um, Shogun's like inner iron court. Currently, the soldiers are all like funneling out right now, and they're rushing towards like the fiend attacks. So it's a perfect distraction. Um, but there are still these like. Um, guards who are directly on fr in front of like the big iron door which requires a key to uh, to be unlocked to like push open to get through um and uh i guess right you reached there just before these guys you're in gaseous form right now so you're like a you're like a cloud of air basically yeah and so uh the way gaseous form reads yep uh is that anything that wind can pass through i can pass through also so you guys would essentially be seeing a cloud squeezing into a keyhole. And that's yeah. Door. Yeah. So, so the guard, the guards kind of emit, like they see this like mist form into like tiny space and just go through the keyhole. Uh, and they're like strip, they're like shouting to open the door, and they like begin to open up the door to rush after it. Um, as uh, Condor and Gavin just sort of walk in right behind, yeah, them, like you belong. <laughs> This was easy. Um, as uh, the guards are rushing to the mist, which is forming up uh, around the Shogun, who is uh, in his chambers. Um, the, the Shogun is actually in full battle gear. It looks like uh, the Fiend attack has kind of put him into red alert. Um, and so he's got his like swords and uh, full like play on as well. Um, so, Ryok, what are you doing as you, as you get in here? Um, yeah, so... As soon as they burst into the door, the, this like swirling gas, it's like fog basically is forming around the guy. Um, I drop as a bonus action, the uh, the, the potion. Uh, so it drops its effect. Uh -huh. um, and then I immediately cast uh, darkness. Nice, it's at that point they wrote a wild magic from Templar Warden. Um, bitch. <laughs> and also you have an advantage on your next roll. Against the Shogun, he wants to help you out. D ten thousand. Yeah. Oops, that's that's right. That's not a right command. It's slash R. There you go. Not slash D. What's up, God? What does God like? Forty-one fifty-seven. Nice. Forty-one fifty-seven. It's low, so it can't be that bad. <laughs> oh, don't <laughs> don't say something like that. Why would you oh, say God. that? The really high ones are like you die, and everyone around. <laughs> Really high so anyone cutting target with a blade is soaked with his own blood. That's pretty cool. So That's pretty that, cool. Anyone that hits me is covered yeah. in their own blood. That's pretty there cool. There you go. That's pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that goes great with when I die, it's a death that is like becomes legend. Uh, yeah, that's yeah, that's true, actually, yeah. Um, yeah, so, so I uh, cast uh, darkness as one action, and I just you guys just see like for a split second you see the cloud like coalesce and into like a, a shadowy form of or a cloudy form of, of Ryuk, uh, yeah. and then it drops and you see Ryuk holding this new strange longsword you've never seen him hold. Um, yeah, it's just black. black. It's like jet black, and the blade looks like shadow, and then all of a sudden you just see whoosh, and darkness uh, spreads fifteen feet in every direction. Nice. Uh, so good, good time to roll initiative. Actually, we'll set that still like surprise round as you come in on gaseous form. Um, okay. 
So, do do do. Let's bring up a notepad to get some initiative going here. Gavin's on a fourteen. Nice. <laughs> I used my initial my, my advantage. I got got yeah. an advantage on initiative. I rolled two fives. <laughs> and that kind of day. Oh. We're off to a great start. We got a little oh. bit of combat going up, music going on. It actually queued in right at the right time. Since I'm nice. just in video mode, hopefully it'll stay that way. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to bring in the Shogun. It goes in the 17. Nice. Uh, and we'll put Condor. Yeah, we'll put Condor in the initiative as well. Um, so. 20 for Condor, god damn. Um, and we're gonna put the Shogun's men on the Shogun's turn order as well to avoid every, a million different initiatives. So we've got Condor and his men, the Shogun and his men, Gavin and Ryuk in this combat here. So, um, <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how badass the Shogun really is. If he can... <laughs> see, I have a problem with boss fights in that I roll terribly on all boss fights. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna hype him up too much, but we'll see. So what far, can... you're doing better than we are. It's true. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Initiative is going well for me. Yep. So um, let's um, let's get this going here. So Condor is gonna go first, uh, and Condor, the ball of like uh, blackness. Um, okay. Um, yeah, the ball of blackness just. Oh, my internet might die. Says it's unstable. You guys still hear me? Yeah, we can still hear you. Yep. Okay, worries me when it does. So, <laughs> so um, yeah, you guys uh, got a big darkness <laughs> appears in the room, and Condor was like charging forward. He's like, ah, um, he doesn't want to run into like the big black hole, basically. So he's gonna uh, instead charge the um, uh, one of uh, the Shogun's men. So actually, what we'll probably do for this is have Condor. And his men fighting the Shogun's men, so that we don't have like 20 different roles every turn. Right. So, um, I'm gonna say that uh, these guys are fighting one another, that'd probably be actually much easier for me. Um, so, the Shogun himself is going to go. So, Shogun time. And um, he is going to get some rolls going with my roll 20. There it is. Too many tabs. So, uh, he's going to. How big is the ball of darkness, Mike? Uh, 15 feet in every direction. 15 feet in every direction. Foot radius, so 30 foot diameter. Sure. Um, so we're gonna say, you can't see in the darkness, so he's probably gonna try and run out of the darkness, I'd assume, uh, to try and, um, yeah, he'll do that. He'll step out of the darkness. So he's like five foot out of the darkness. He's gonna attack Ryuk with his katana. Got 23 versus your armor class in the first attack. Uh, unless he's, Running into the darkness, he's not attacking me. The darkness is centered on me, so we cannot do. Oh, both. sorry, I sorry, yeah. I thought you did it on. Um, you said it on him. No, it centers on. Him. Okay, he's gonna charge towards Gavin then. So Gavin, a twenty-three. Uh, twenty-three will hit. All right, and the second attack is a twenty-two. So I'm um, guessing that's also hit as well. Yep. So, um, you guys, Gavin takes. Come on, roll with us. 11 followed by. Da, 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 da. Take an H to roll these dice today, Ross Money. 11 again, there we go. So 22 <laughs> so 20, points damage. 22 points. Straight up on his first time. <laughs> um, and he cuts at you, he goes slash at you. I'll be a night traitor! Um, and it is your turn, Gavin. Uh, then I will, uh, I'll hit him back. Uh, I'm going to, uh, swing my, uh, swing my Warhammer at him. Sure thing. Uh, which is an 18. Uh, an 18 is a, let me check. Because <laughs> I don't remember if I said 18 or 18. 18's a hit. Okay, so he's going to go ahead and also make that a Divine Smite. After, so... It is 12 plus, stand by. Sorry, I lost stand my sheet. By. Let me put my sheet over here, that's better. Uh, by a Divine Smite. 
<laughs> well, I get bad rolls. 22, 23. <laughs> uh, so he'll, he's going to take uh, 25 damage. So there you go. So, see what I mean? So uh, he gives as good as he can get. Nice, cool. He takes it. What's that look like? Uh, he, you know, he's coming up to him. He hits him with his sword, uh, and, he, and I say, "This is the Shogun, right?" Yeah. I say, "You, know, you have betrayed your." I do not have that. Sho- I do not have <laughs> Ryu's your voice. <laughs> you yeah, have, be- you have betrayed your people and uh, and this land. Uh, and I swing and hit him because I can't think of anything smart right now. <laughs> yeah, you like you, you like stagger him as you uh, as you splash down. Uh, and he says, "You cannot judge me." As he's kind of fighting back towards you, uh, and it is Ryuk's turn as you are in the darkness, right? Sweet. Uh, yeah, Ryuk moves towards this guy, uh, bringing the darkness with him. Uh, and as he does, this uh, strange, demonic-sounding, echoey voice uh, permeates through the room as he begins casting Hex as a bonus action on this man. Uh, cool. and that, this, so I will deal extra damage as an action. Yeah, so I'm moving to envelop this guy uh, in more darkness. Um, nice. Basically just at the edge of that uh, and casting um, Hex on him. Uh, mm-hmm. And he also gets uh, disadvantage on all dexterity saving throw, or uh, dexterity checks. Ability uh. check. So anything Dexterity base. Everything dexterity base makes sense. Cool. So, uh, anything else? That's it. That's an action and a move for him. All right, cool thing. Uh, so, um, this. all right, perfect. Takes it to the top of round two. We're going to take Condor off the ten. I can see makes sense. He's doing things. So. Pack the Shogun's turn. Uh, he's slashed at Gavin, but also been slashed at pretty well uh, himself. Um, and um, <laughs> one of the new decisions. We're getting close, actually. We're actually going far away. Uh, and so he's going to kind of um, spin um, and uh, kind of dodge away using a disengage as a bonus. Um, and uh, essentially, that looks like a kind of like parries away like the Warhammer and just kind of spins away. Um, backing away about 10 feet uh, and then you see uh, from his like sword in one hand uh, and his hand towards that any other he just kind of begins to build this like glowing ball of energy in one hand uh, and then just like he uses his sword to send the magic down it um, so he's kind of like um, god what was the class in 4 they're really fucking cool um, but anyway he's like a sword mage um, Oh, blade, there we go. Uh, and um, he uh, sends the ball of fire towards the group of you. So um, that is going to be, let me check which save. I believe it's a dex based. I'm like 99% sure. It is a dexterity saving throw, please. On who? Uh, on, I guess it is a 20 foot radius. So I'm guessing you guys are within 20 feet of one another. Yeah, yeah, because I moved my. Yeah. Moved, yeah. So it's all. So it's both all of you guys, us, myself, the Shogun, Gavin, and Ryu all do decks. Uh, the Shogun, he's what he could move. He could move out of the radius, so he wouldn't be stupid enough to blast himself. <laughs> he's gonna set it to a point behind you guys, which hits you, but not him. Fourteen. Fourteen. So yeah, he's gonna center the square slightly behind you guys, so it kind of blooms out. It probably hits his own men. Um. Oh, I'm, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to get a little bit incinerated here. <laughs> so, uh, 14 and a 14. Alright, you guys save. Hopefully, you actually just wrote on the nose. Um, but, you're going to take half of this. You take 12 damage as you are burnt. 12 fire damage as well. As he uh, sends out the fireball towards you guys, and it just lands in a blast uh, close towards you. Um, <laughs> Twelve. Uh, yeah, twelve damage. Sweet. Ryuk is uh, Raz resistance to fire, so he takes six. Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So uh, that is uh, Shogun's turn. Gavin, it is yours. Uh, I am going to. Uh, so is he? How far away from me is he? Can I run up to him? He's still within thirty feet. Yeah, he's in thirty feet of you. So. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna do another attack with my uh, warhammer. Nice. 
20 would hit. A 20 is a hit, yes. 18 is the number you're looking for. 12 bludgeoning, and I'm going to make this a divine smite as well. Nice. Let's have it. Uh, so that's another, tw- that's 23 points of damage. And Gavin says, you will not just be judged by me, you will be judged by the divine. Because I completely forgot that I get an extra attack. So I only swung <laughs> once last time. So I'm going to try well, him again. Something worth memory. Oh my god, I can't remember when Josh said, looks like this man is content with giving a little head to his friends. <laughs> <laughs> the old ones are the best, because I've forgotten what they are. Alright, so a 13 isn't a hit. 13 is not a hit. Yeah, okay. Okay. So, a uh, total of, what, 23 damage, it looks like? Uh, yeah, 23 damage, and... Alright. It's taking a fair amount at this point. And I'm going to do a, uh, I'm going to do a lay on hands on myself to get some hit, hit points back. Shopping. Good idea. Go. Go. So that is Gavin's turn. Ryok is yours. Uh, yeah. So he's going to slide up in there, uh, enveloping them both in, um, this uh, this blackness. What's the stats on the longsword? Just a regular ass longsword? Uh, 1d8. Okay, so 1d8. Uh, uh, this is uh, magical, so you're gonna have a plus two. So 1d8 plus two. Okay. And it's uh, it's not finesse, I assume, right? Uh, 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 no, it's longsword. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna say, I'm gonna say it's totally not. So strength yeah. uh, plus two, and then 1d8 plus two. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. So yeah, he's going to make one attack with the long sword, um, and then he's going to follow up with his uh, his his ninjato. He's using the long sword one-handed, um, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens there. Uh, I think I have. Uh, I can do sneak attack because Gavin's right in the way. So sneak sneak. Uh, bad. He's bad at long swords. Bad at things. So he's going to follow up with his other sword. Uh, Fourteen to hit. Miss. Okay. That's all he does. He misses both times. <laughs> well, the Ripperoni. Yeah, he's really um, bad at, at hitting, apparently. Yeah, only Rags hit you, actually. He's done a he's done a hex, so yeah. that's a thing. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's top of round three, and Shogun gets his turn. What's up, Trick Daddy? Oh, Raffian, nice. Play yeah, Raffian every uh, we've got Tuesday and Thursdays on the show, so uh, welcome, dude. Good to see ya. Um, so, he's gonna charge back in uh, to the uh, melee, uh, flying back again with his katana uh, in a uh, rather, like a very finesse kind of swivelly, too many, um, <laughs> like, he does a thing which is like really stupid where he like turns around to do slashes at you and stuff like that, like they always do in movies where it's totally inaccurate fighting style, but it's, you know, full on like Jackie Chan style ninja combat stuff going on right now. Um, he rolls a nat 1 um, on his first attack uh, against uh, Ryok, which is not good whatsoever. The second one is oh, 2 oh, nat 1! man! This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. When it comes to boss fights, I'm like, this guy is pretty fucking cool. Like, he does his awesome ability. He's got a plus... Oh, shit. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. Um... So yeah, uh, Super Wars King, we are fighting the Shogun currently, but you'd think he'd be badass and cool, right? Wrong. He's he's a piece of shit right now. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> you can't buy anything. Um, so that is that. Uh, Gavin, it's your turn. So uh, I'm going to put a little flavor into this. I'm going to say that he fumbles so badly as he's stumbling by Gavin. Uh, you know, Gavin just sort of steps out of the way and... Uh, pushes him forward with his hand, with his necrotic hand, and uh, casts uh, Inflict Wounds on him. All right, let's give it. So, shout out these rolls once you got them. Uh, I rolled a 12, but with his double fumble, does it hit? Yeah, he rolled two net ones. This dude is, is, is fucked. <laughs> yeah, there's... He's, he's been very dishonorable. Uh, that will be 32, 33 points of damage, of necrotic damage. Oh, damn, how's that? To- damn, dude. 
So is the, is the second one a higher level cast? Is that what that is? How yeah, because I did the top higher top? level cast. Ah, good lord. So do you add dude, those two together or is it just the bottom one? You add the two together. Oh, fuck me, dude. Ouch. Yeah. Um, so that is maths. It's nasty. That's nasty wounds, math, right? Yeah, inflict wounds at higher level is nasty. Uh, yeah, he just like screams as you. I mean, you can go ahead and describe. I guess it's the like the so as he, evil. Yeah, as he right? stumbles by uh, Gavin, you know, because he he's hit with uh, with his divine smite before. So Gavin, Gavin's all about balance. So as he goes tripping by him, he just square in the middle of his back, lands the necrotic hand of the Raven Queen right center of his back, and uh, as I you know, you will be judged by the divine as well. Uh, to bring balance back to this land, and the, the basically the the necrotic energy just flows into him, and you almost like hear a raven crawl as it goes into him, just, ah! and, and uh, like you know almost like an explosion of raven wings you know, spread out across his back and then seep into him and just and causes the damage. Nice, awesome stuff. He's just kind of like oh, 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 screams out in agony. Um, and it's Ryuk's turn. Come on, Ryuk, you got this. Yeah, so I'm going back in with the same uh, one-two combo, bringing the shadow with me. We're gonna do a longsword, huh? Nope, that's gonna miss. Uh, and we're gonna do the uh, the other hand. Huh? Nice. That's also a miss. <laughs> that's <laughs> advantages. That'd be great. To play two for the. So, uh, <laughs> so, Will, I have your luck, turns out. Yeah, you, yeah, turns out. I'm, I'm alright at this. This is. <laughs> this yeah. is fun. Maybe you get mine, and now I stop rolling that one. It's double now on. Yep. Um, so, <laughs> Ryuk, I don't think he has done any damage yet. No. no it's, and it's the top of round four. Shogun's turn. Um, this dude is um, going to come at you again with harnessing. As he embarrassed himself last turn, so he's gonna um, he's gonna focus on Gavin, saying as Gavin is stinky. Fuck me! Wow, nice. really? Three now ones in a row, dude. This is you oh. know, believe in the dice gods. <laughs> <laughs> you don't believe in this. I mean, like the the Shogun has had some bad karma, and this is just coming out right now. He's got a second attacker. I swear to God, if this is another that one. Okay, good. A twenty-four versus your armor class, Gavin. Oh yeah, he hits. All right, good, good, good. At last, dude, I've got to, I've to scroll up so far to get my attack roll. Uh, Seventeen damage. Uh, in one I did some healing on myself. Once he once he finally hits, he does damage. But the problem is getting there. Um, so that takes it to Gavin's turn, and he says, uh, "You will never take the shogun from me." Um. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna stick with my whole with all my whole balance thing, even though it's not that bad. I say I'm going to say, uh, you know, even the even the land, uh, even the land strikes out against you as my non necrotic hand turns into the fox werewolf lichen hand, and I do the big uh, double predatory strike on him. Or actually, I guess I, it's yeah, you get three predatory strikes according to the rules of Order of the Lichen by Matt Mercer. Uh, mm. So. 17, does that hit? 17 is not a hit. Ah, uh, let's try I'm one looking more. looking for uh, the magic number, is, as you can probably tell by now, 18. 26. 26 to hit. <laughs> that does seven points of damage. And then the oh, third thank one. You to, uh, Ooh, attack. got a nat, nat 20. No. Oh, nat 20 is a hit. Yes, thank you to uh, Matt and TV Flash. Just because you don't see something doesn't mean it's not there. So, no less. 17, so 17 points of damage. The land itself is striking out against you. You have offended the, go the guardians of your own land as uh, his hand of U Utara, Ukara, Utari uh, strikes out. Uh, Savagery. Savagery. Ryuk, your turn. Redeem uh, Let's see if I can redeem myself. Let's see what yeah. happens. Let's see if I can land a single hit. Huh? 18! 18! Yeah! And the other hand? <laughs> uh, nine! Yep. So, uh, he hits 18 with the, uh, with the, the magical longsword. Mm -hmm. Music just got So, uh, let's see here. It's going to do six damage. Uh, it's the 100 plus hours of Black Friday sneak credit attack credit because Gavin's right next to him. So, oh, great. Two damage. So, eight damage with that magical black longsword. <laughs> 
so you've got uh, you got a plus two to the long sword, right? Uh, yeah. yeah so. I, put the, I put that on there. Okay. Um, yep. So to level eight maths is hard. Okay. Um, Gavin, do you have your? I guess Shin would be able to not Shin, but uh, Ryo could be able to see it. Do you have your shield out? Your your. Uh, yeah, uh, Agatha is out. I've been using it. Okay. Uh, you you feel you hear you hear Ryuk say, "Damn this blade!" And you feel something hit you in the chest as Ryuk thrusts the, the sword against you, as if to give it to you. Oh, so you've you've just given me yeah, this long I, I'm, sword? I'm like hitting you in the chest with a sword and like take this. Okay. Uh, and yeah, you said you said it, so okay, yeah, I grab it. Nice, cool. Oh boy, we're on five more retweets. Also, if you guys haven't followed yet, I believe I'm 14, my, my kind of tells me, uh, out of 20. So if you haven't followed yet, hit that follow button and join us to catch all of our shows here. Five nights a week, 10 shows a week on Encounter Role Play. Don't miss them. Also, the tweets are on. We've actually on 30 retweets. That is a lie. So 20 in the chat. So get retweeting only a few away from you guys getting to decide what happens next in our campaign with fighting the Shogun. Um, this is the penultimate, most likely, episode of the, uh, the Samurai Central. Nice. So, um, oh, yeah. that is Ryuk's turn, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Over round five, Shogun, uh, he's taken a lot of damage. He's going to do his spin backwards once again. Um, and uh, instead of... Um, Casting a fireball or uh, doing any kind of spinny sword attacks, uh, he kind of like cl uh, clamps to his heart, uh, where Ryuk previously noticed um, there being like a source of great, like well of great magical power from there. Um, and you see uh, his heart, like the the magic from there, if you're like um, your, like magic vision, I suppose, Ryuk, just being drained out from the heart and going back into like, the rest of his body. Uh, and you see like some like cuts on his body where you've like smashed him, just like begin to heal over, um, and uh, and he's gonna back into the fray, <sighs> uh, and he's gonna charge back towards you guys. Bless his action for the turn. So, Gavin, your turn. Seems like this heart is the like prime area where uh, his power resides. Right. Uh, so, uh, a what's a long sword? Is a D eight. I'm just seeing if I've got something else. It doesn't. It's a D eight plus two. Plus two for your plus strength. Uh, yeah. But a long well. sword is versatile, I think. So if you hold it with two hands, it's a D ten. D ten. Yeah. Uh, well, then I'm gonna. Yeah. Then I'll use it. Uh, I'll use it like. Uh, I'm just gonna use my warhammer roll, but it's the long sword because that's a D ten as well. Nothing. But you get a plus two to attack and a plus two to uh, damage as well. Damage, it's yeah. Magical. Magical longsword. Okay, yeah. so it's a plus two longsword. Well, yeah. then let me. Yeah, I'm just. I roll it, and I, we know that I got plus two on everything. Yeah, that works. Uh, uh, eight does not hit. Eight is a miss. And fifteen. Uh, seventeen does not hit. With the longsword. Seventeen is one off. Yeah. Um. So. Um. Unfortunately, anything else for your turn, Gavin? Uh, I don't have anything left. Uh, I want to save. Uh, I want to save some touch on hands in case someone goes down. So you know we're good. Nice, but excellent stuff. So that is going to be Ryuk's turn. Uh, yeah. So Ryuk now has his uh, his Nidato back firm in hand, and he's going to be using both of those eighteen and a fifteen. Um, so let's get some damage on that. So eight damage plus his sneak attack damage, which is nine, plus his hex damage, which is three. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, so 20 damage. Uh, yeah. 20 damage, hello. Yeah, he gets 20 damage as he gets slashed with uh, two ninja swords, and then uh, he erupts in necrotic fire and uh, gets some hex damage. Ouch, painful, painful. Um, so he kind of screams out, oh! Um, as this happens, I don't mean to sound that so quite as orgasmic as it does. I mean, uh, it, it is, um, anybody else in your turn, Ryuk? That's, that is the end of it, yeah. <laughs> cool. So, uh, that is going to take it to, uh, Shogun's turn. Hello. Um, so he's going to slash back into Gavin. He's focusing at 20. Oh, Hello. man. Oh, baby. Second attack is going to be a 19. Oof. Oh. Uh, 19 does not hit. All right, so the first one 
It's 14 damage. He actually rolled really poorly on that damage. <coughs> sure. So, sure. Um, yeah, he rolled 17 on 2d8 and he rolled 14 on 4, so, you know, could have been much worse. Could have been much worse. Yeah. Uh, that is his turn. Um, finally, it's going back. My luck. Gavin, it is yours, my friend. I'm sorry, how much damage did I take? I did 14 total. 14. Um, shit. Uh, <laughs> Gavin's gonna Gavin's gonna put it all on the line and go for uh, go for it with the long sword. Cool. Uh, does not hit. Damn it. Uh, the second one hits, and uh, he is going to do uh, his. Uh, He's going to do a Divine Smite and Channel Divinity uh, Touch of Death on it. Uh, so we're going to do the big, the double whammy. Big whammy. The double the double god whammy. Big whammy. Big whammy. So 12 plus the Divine Smite. You know, we're going to go higher level on Divine Smite. And then we're divine going to smitten. do Touch of Death. Divine Smitten Kittens. Let's give it to him. What's up, Robin? How's it going? Coffee here myself, my friend. So that would be a total of, let's see, uh, where are we? 12, uh, 20, 23 plus 9 is uh, 33. 30, 33. Is that right? No, 32 plus 9. 32 points of necrotic slashing and radiant damage. Nice, nice. Hot to list. This giant blow just like staggers him backwards. I mean, in maths, okay. Um, staggers him backwards. He actually go, falls down onto one knee. Like, oof, ah, oof, uh, and he falls down as this kind of withering blow sets him down with a touch of death. You cannot use your people this way. You were sworn to protect this land and these people. The people are mine! And, um. Ryok, it's your turn. Uh, yeah, he's, uh. <laughs> let's, let, let's see if he hits before I say anything awesome. <laughs> he does this awesome thing, which... Oh. No, he doesn't hit. He doesn't hit. Uh, yeah. Ryuk doesn't try. He... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he silently stabs the guy. Uh, yeah. So, um... But damn. Um, yeah, you, you slash him, but he manages to, like, get uh, his blade up in the way that doesn't pierce the, uh, the armor. Yeah, that, the shadow is also gone, but I wasn't sure if you saw that. The, the darkness has been gone for a minute. Gotcha. That's no worries. So, uh, so he's gonna... in darkness? What's that? Are we in darkness? No, no, the darkness no, has been gone for okay, a while. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So uh, he's kind of down on one knee, but he's going to rise up and slash uh, towards your face, Gavin. Uh, he's not a fan of yours. For a 21 and a 20. So this is going to be bad, guys. Both hits. Yeah, both are hits. Oh man! So um, he's gonna he's gonna rise up. He's saying the people are mine, and a twelve and seven equals nineteen damage. I have one hit point. Oh, oh what a shame! Could have been what one. What a shame! He said. A... <laughs> Worst DM ever. <laughs> oh, good. I didn't kill you. You know, you know you want to see it, chat. You know you want to see it. So, um, that is his turn. Gavin, it is yours. He looks pretty shaky on his feet right now, but his heart is still, like, protected by, like, a mailed fist that he's got over it. Um, so, um, that is the kind of sweet spot by the looks of things. Uh, even if I fall, these people will never be yours. And he stabs up. You know, Gavin's like down on one knee because he's yeah. in bad shape. And instead of healing himself, he's going to try to end this tyranny, which might be the death of him. We will see. Let's see. 21. 21 is a hit. I have one last divine smite in me also. <laughs> Let's see. Is it enough? And of course, and I've got another attack as well. So yes. so that's nine 18. plus nine. That's eighteen. And then I've got to swing it one more time to try if I catch him. 
with a nat one. So Ooh. it either got him or it didn't. <laughs> so, so, um, so yeah, we're gonna say like the um, stabs up at him. <clears throat> yeah, you go forwards, and whereabouts are you aiming for? I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to the heart. I, you know, I'm trying to Absolutely. take out that uh, the, the the heart. You know, where yeah. the magic lies, where his uh, the power is radiating from. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to do math here. So <laughs> I need to calculate for this one. Um, so you know what? Uh, one second. I still have oh. my St. Cuthbert channel divinity, but I don't, I don't remember what it does. Uh, no, it doesn't do me any help. Uh, ooh, uh, what's sacred weapon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> looking up all the abilities. If you've got anything else, be a good, good time to see. Uh, I've, well, because I've already used a smite. I've already used a divine smite. Yeah. Uh, well... Oh well, wait a second. So here's a question. This is uh, I have two touch of I have two uh, I have two channel divinities. Do they necessarily have to be one in one, or can they both be used for the same god? I'll say for, I'll say for this case, you could use it. Seeing as you're on one HP, you're fighting a shogun. It's pretty cool. So you could use it. well, and it makes sense because I'm gonna pull on the Raven Queen and yeah. do cut. To, you know, as as I am so close to Death's Door, I can see the Raven Queen hovering over me, and yeah. I use my my second channel of eight for Touch of Death, which is another nine damage. So that brings nice. us up to that, three times nine is twenty seven total. Nice. And so uh, you just like ram the sword through uh, the Shogun's like mailed fist which is over his heart. It goes through the hand, he screams out in agony and all the way through uh, down into his heart. Uh, oh, and the Pi Lord also blesses Gavin with his holy magic for a 1d10 heal. Thank you, good guy Pi, for the donation. Thank you, because nice. Lord knows I need it. Um, uh, so roll a d well, go ahead and finish your story. So he shoves it yeah, yeah. These people will never be yours. Uh, goes through the hand, goes through the heart, and you see him just kind of like ah, screaming out in pain uh, as you run it through the heart and all the way through uh, to the other side where it can be seen on the other side. Just as I'm feeling like Ryuk brings down his swords to, I don't know, where do you want to? Like, because if you're like behind the Shogun, so Gavin's come up from the front, and at the same time you're swinging your blades around, you can describe to me saying that, Ryuk. Yeah, am I, am I rolling these attacks? Or is this just no, 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 he's technically dead, so. Um, yeah, so basically, yeah, you, you stab him and you say, uh, these people will never be yours. Um, and uh, Ryuk watches as he stumbles back. Uh, his tail kind of grabs the guy's leg as he draws, draws both Ninjato across his throat and whispers mm -hmm. in his ear, and your life will be mine. And then blood just sprays. Actually, his own blood covers the scone guy. Oh, right. <laughs> That's true, yeah, his own blood just... <laughs> pours over him um, as uh, you come in from the other side and just take him down and uh, I imagine that Ryuk after that just kind of like the swords across the head kind of movement and uh, the head just kind of falls off um, and his own blood just like pours out from his like from the from the neck wound uh, and just goes all over uh, his body and staining him um, and uh, you guys like standing there like covered in blood um as it uh, looks like condor it uh, looks like condor's men have been like killed but condor himself has just managed to come through the fight with several cuts and wounds all over him um there's blood covering him as well uh and uh he's just kind of standing there panting he's like that is, is he dead is it over yes he is quite dead he uh he like spits on the body uh <laughs> And uh, he says, heart. Um, and he like goes in and just like rips out like the heart, which has all like been pierced with the uh, with the the blood. Uh, and Condor just kind of like crushes it in his hand uh, and just kind of goes everywhere. Um, and uh, like chucks it back down on the floor. Um, and he says, well, my friends, it seems as if we have changed the course of the future today. Yes. It still remains whether we can make it a brighter future for all. Gavin's like holding his guts in. Yeah. My friend. Need healing. 
Uh, actually, you know what? I can. I, I actually can. Uh, since we're out of combat, I can use an action and I, I can heal myself up some. Nice. Yeah, and the Google Kai Blessing heals you for two as well. Um, and uh, yeah, he says, uh, "Well, my friends, now only one thing remains. We will fight the war while still find our samurai sigil. But for now, we need to rest <laughs> and tell the people that a new dawn is rising." The tyrant is dead. Come, we must go to the people. And he kind of motions towards like the big double doors leading out into the uh, main like courtyard of the Iron Court. Yeah, I imagine you guys like, cause like Gavin's wounded and Condor is wounded. Like you're kind of like doing the the arms over shoulders thing. You're like carrying each oh, other. Absolutely. As you're like stumbling towards like healing yourselves and one another. Um, and the. And, and Ryo just Ryo just walks out in front of you, completely unarmed. He hasn't taken a single hit the entire combat. He just walks out. Do do do. Gavin's a big target. <laughs> hey, did my job. I'm the tank. <laughs> so, um, you guys uh, head out, and the last final shot um, is the um, the group of you guys. Shoulder to shoulder, heading out towards the uh, the big double doors to the uh, the courtyard of the Iron Court. See what's going on out there, and to see what the samurai people think of the um, <laughs> the final <sighs> final ending, I guess. Um, and uh, no no longer having a shogun, most importantly, that. So next week is going to be the finale of the samurai sigil. Maybe we'll find the sigil. Maybe we won't. There's certainly a war to be fought next time um but until then thank you guys for uh, for watching uh, <laughs> the dong are rising good guy by that art is rather so before we fully uh leave out of that place though mm. I, I do want to say that uh Ryuk reaches down before they all leave and he takes the heart nice nice um and yeah so uh that's where we're uh, that's where we're wrapping it up today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for uh, everyone who donated and followed, subscribed today, and just hang out and uh, had some great ideas for viewer decisions. It was a great time, um, and uh, hopefully next week we will have uh, all three of us, or all four of us rather, back to um, to finish up our campaign, and then who knows what will happen next. Um, exclusives to be revealed later down the line. But before that, let's go around with our wonderful cast and. Thank you guys, uh, and do your thoughts on the session and where we can find you. Of course, if you guys in the chat enjoyed uh, today's show, then hit that follow button and join us. And here's all my social media. I'm here five minutes a week, ten shows a week. Be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, for Dawnbreaker. Which <laughs> be so, um, but let's go to uh, let's go to Mike first of all. Sweet. Uh, yeah, no, I like the session. I like that we get to kill the Shogun. I didn't expect uh, the campaign going to kill the Shogun direction. Uh, so that yeah. was interesting. Um, and he was quite formidable. It was more so than I expected, I guess. Um, and uh, yeah, as always, I am Mike. You can hear me fight. You can hear me. You can hear me and see me here on uh, Encounter Roleplay every Monday uh, now and for the foreseeable future. Uh, and if you don't want to see me uh, on uh, on that day, you can come over and hang out on my channel, on Made Gaming, on Tuesday and Thursday, right after these guys finish their stream. Um, and yeah, exclamation point Eeyore in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> There you, there you have it, folks. There you have it. Awesome. Uh, Tool School, your thoughts and where can we find you, my friend? Uh, yeah, well, you usually can find me right here on uh, Encounter Roleplay. I also I'm, I have a fledgling channel that's just starting up. A couple people have stopped by and said hello, so feel free to stop by and say hello whenever you want. Um, and uh, no, uh, loved, the, uh, loved the session. Uh, had a lot of fun. Uh, Gavin, uh, you know... Uh, I, you know, me remembering all the fun stuff that people have given me uh, for uh, for Gavin and his multiple personalities, gods, deities that he deals with is always kind of fun to figure uh, out how much uh, what he can do and when. But uh, always is fun uh, for role playing uh, pieces uh, when I get to fight with Gavin because him being able to use both his you know uh, his balance of uh, good and uh, good and dark and now uh, and now uh, nature as well. So uh, that's always kind of cool. Um, but no, uh, Samurai Sigma has been a great it's been a great journey. Uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. I've loved all of the the, the political intrigue, and uh, you know, just uh, such a colorful 
group of NPCs that we've gotten to know yeah. uh, in this world and really had some cool uh, development with them. So that's that's awesome. Uh, but uh, anyway, the uh, you know I, I'm looking forward to uh, I'm looking forward to next session to see how we wrap this up and I guess Gavin's uh, Gavin's wedding. <laughs> Gavin and Signe uh, officially tying the knot. I guess he probably may has to go back to the Shrine of the Raven Queen or something. We'll have to yeah. see how Will solves that one. Um, and then also, uh, uh, like this. <laughs> yeah, uh, take a quick second to shout out. Start. I finally. I know. Ever since I started playing on uh, Encounter Roleplay, I've been talking about uh, the campaign I've been building. I actually now have a, uh, a date. I am going to start that campaign uh, the first Saturday in January uh, over on my channel. And uh, we'll have some familiar faces, uh, hopefully, in the cast uh, that you've seen here on Encounter Roleplay. And uh, so if you enjoy, uh, I've enjoyed the vice that I did on the last 24-hour stream, we'll be doing another session on the next 24-hour stream. I will be starting the real adventures in Azira and the world of the Vice uh, coming up on uh, the first Saturday in January. Uh, awesome. So thank you to Will for all the inspiration of uh, me being able to uh, test out the whole, test the waters of being a DM and also to setting up my own channel and all the support everyone nice. here at Unmade Gaming, uh, at Unmade Gaming and at Encounter Roleplay, sorry, I'm reading the screen, have given me. So... Uh, Come on by, stay tuned, and more to come from the world of the vice. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Oh, thank you guys again for joining us. Like I said, I'll be back tomorrow at Dawnbreaker at 1 p.m. or 6 p.m. if you're in the UK. That's Steampunk DD, followed by Tinker's Tale. Uh, myself, Lee, Kira, Sydney, Charlie, Josh, uh, at 4 p.m. or 9 p.m. if you're in the UK. But until next time, check out these guys' channel. Follow us if you haven't already. Here's all my social media once again. And the recommendation of the podcast, Adventure is Anonymous. If you haven't had a listen, go check it out. It's, uh, we're doing pretty well at the moment. And um, people seem to be enjoying it. So I suggest you might as well. But until next time, try not to roll too many now ones because, God damn it, the Shogun knows that he, he's wrong enough <laughs> this today. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gavin should have just like, started yeah. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it's true and of course we want to be here laughing when you do so good night folks see you soon bye bye and